See, this is the real secret of life, to be completely engaged with the here and now. Welcome to the Human Derek Podcast, connecting you with the seven fundamentals of life that will take you to the next level. Everybody wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself. <laughs> it was all a dream. Today is about the power of you. You've now entered the Human Derek Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Hey, uh, welcome to another episode of the Human Derek podcast. Uh, we're going to kick this thing off right with a nice, delicious, warm cup of Guadalupe roastery coffee. Yeah, you may not be drinking one right now. Maybe you are. Actually, that'd be pretty cool. If you were listening to this while drinking the coffee that I'm talking about, added bonus points. You give, give yourself a gold star, a little pat on the back little self high five or if you you know what if there's someone next to you also drinking a cup of this coffee guadalupe roastery give them a high five okay now we're just we're going too big i don't even know that's too much for one for one person to handle it's kind of overwhelming for me to think about that many people drinking this delicious coffee so uh we got an amazing guest today and what are we doing we're talking about coffee real quick so guadalupe roastery delicious brown liquid that fills my ceramic mug on a regular if not daily basis it is so good so 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 good i love it uh if you would like to purchase purchase buy you know, that's a good word get it acquire acquisition go on acquisition mode if you want to get some coffee beans some guadalupe roastery super cool company that is all about the people that grow the beans in the countries where the beans come from, comes from a variety of countries, uh, places where coffee grows. I'm not a coffee expert, but I know that uh, it's not super easy to grow coffee in San Diego. At least that's what I'm told. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe I, I don't know better because I'm not a coffee expert. But uh, if you enjoy coffee, if you've ever thought about enjoying coffee, if you kicked a caffeine habit and I'm just egging you on and this is some pure pressure if you feel pressured right now to buy some coffee you should check out guadalupe roastery uh, com. guadalupe is uh spelled just like it sounds like Gu- guadalupe guadalupe oh i said guadalupe it's not loopy it's lupe guadalupe uh coffee roastery punch in d-e-r-e-k Derek. get 10 percent off the amazing beverage that can fuel your life and if you're sensitive to caffeine, I don't know if they have decaf. I'm not even really interested in decaf, but maybe they do. Check it out. You it for a gift for a friend. Is, it, is there any holidays coming up? There's some kind of holiday coming up, depending on where you're at. I'm sure it's good to give gifts. Fourth of July. Give your friend Fourth of July coffee. That's what you should do. So let's talk about today's guest. Uh, it was super fun conversation. In fact, I, I'm not quite certain how long this recording is because uh, I haven't got to that phase of putting it all together. I do know we were talking for three and a half hours, and uh, I don't know if all of it is going to make it in. And we did take a bathroom break at one point, or I did. I don't know. I'm not going to point the finger at him, but uh, incredible person. He is out there sharing the gift of love with people. You're going to hear that word love a lot today. His name is Daniel Prock. He is a He's an actor, he's a model, he's a speaker based out of Windensee, California. Beautiful, beautiful community. If you're traveling to San Diego or Southern California, highly recommend you know figuring out where Windensee is at, especially if you're a surfer, although uh, I'm gonna maybe get in trouble from the local surfers for that one. But uh, Windensee is a beautiful, beautiful community right on the Pacific Ocean. And we talk a bit about, um, a lot about uh, love today, but also Daniel has published some books and I'll let him tell his story on today's episode, but the book of love, the book of light, um, the book of heaven. I have a couple of them nearby me on the desk. In fact, I I picked up the book of love um, before getting a chance to meet him. And it's really powerful. I mean, just even right now talking about it, I'm getting the chills a little bit, just thinking about it. It's a super special gift that Daniel has given the world. And you're going to hear 
that from him as to how it came about, why, and just a lot of great things in life happening for this guy. And I believe he's onto something here with his message of love. So welcome to today's episode of the Human Derek Podcast. As much of a dweeb as I probably once did. <laughs> yeah, I learned to talk from less from here and lower and then lower and Ooh. then lower and then I still have to remind myself to go lower. Oh, go get low. Yeah. How low can you go? <laughs> Wait, did I press record? I was, right, <clears throat> Sweet. So, hey, welcome aboard the spaceship. Nice. Got everything. Ready for launch. <laughs> everything is in its, in its good place. Mm-hmm. So you were, <clears throat> you were just telling me about... You're talking a bit about love being God, really, inside, outside, kind of everywhere. Mm-hmm. And kids, uh, I really set mine up very well. There we go. Uh, kids like, uh, you know, being deprogrammed because when we're young, we realize, you know, we just got a lot of love to give and very understanding and like infinitely patient. You didn't say all these things. I'm putting words in your mouth now. Yeah. I'm putting my perspective. Yeah, yeah. Of it in there, uh, but yeah, and you, you actually were kind of before we got started here talking about uh, raising your awareness. Do you think that w- when you said that what sticks sticks out to me is um, like getting back knowledge that we had when we were kids, in a sense? I'd say, like knowledge that we had just instinctively, a knowing more than what we learned in this world, that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw a buddy post something last night and he said, just some Instagram post, and he said, I'm grateful for remembering. And he's a real spiritual dude that I met in Sedona. And I know what he meant because, and the way he like, quoted what he was saying, because we're remembering things we already know. We're letting go of things that we learned that were not true, that were limitations. Um, All sorts of things that I've gone through over time, like beliefs that I've realized I had based on scarcity, based on fear, based on lack, um, ways that I thought the, the world operated based on my experience. But then we can imagine and believe and upgrade the way that we look at the world and then our perception creates this new reality the way we perceive the world is the way that the world becomes when we consciously perceive it as beautiful glorious wonderful you know and from the space of love and light um yeah the kids i just remember my little nephew he's nine now but when i moved from denver about maybe eight years ago uh, I was living in my parents' basement in Denver and moved to Vegas for four months with no money and no car and just couch surfed. I call it couch surfing, but one of my brothers was <laughs> like, dude, let's not sugarcoat it. You're homeless, man. And I was like, <laughs> well, you know, you know, we call it what you want to call it. But I uh, didn't really have a place to stay. It was just bouncing from place to place. Literally, I had $200 when I left Denver and nowhere to stay when I got to to Vegas. Um, well, let me say, I actually had five nights to stay in hotels that my dad had uh, from like gambling at some small casinos in Colorado. So <laughs> three nights at the Orleans and two nights at Planet Hollywood, <laughs> that'll get me going. And uh-huh. then it did, you know, but so I was there for four months and then moved to San Diego because my sister had a baby and she lives in Lemon Grove. So... She's like, can you come help out with my baby for a week? So I jumped into a car with some strangers. There was some website called Zimride, which was like a carpooling <laughs> website. Sounds dangerous. Yeah, my, my dad <laughs> thought I was going to get killed. And it was just a bunch of like like four, three Asian college students that were driving from Vegas to San Diego. And I gave them 20 bucks and just... Hmm. But I made it. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so, but when I got to San Diego, was helping out with my nephew. He's like three months old, 
And I stayed there for a week and then two weeks and then three. And then I just stayed there for like two, three years until I got myself my act together. Let me put it that way and found my place in Wind and Sea. But um, my little nephew, when he was, um, you know, like three, four, five months old, he would take a nap and he'd wake up and he had this like bald head, just shiny, bright, light skin, glowing type of energy. He'd wake up and he'd just like, He's looking around with the biggest smile on his face. And I'm like, this little dude doesn't have a reason to smile. Like he does, It's not a reason. He's just smiling. He is God's joy. He's three, four months old. It's not like he wakes up and he's like, oh, I have this happy thing that just happened to me. Or the way that a lot of times as humans, we have something happen that has us be happy. Mm. He was just happy because that's his natural state of being. That's all of our natural state of being. I know this. Because, well, it just is, you know, like, <laughs> and I figured it out sometimes something that I think should take, you know, it's like an obvious thing now, but it took me so long to figure out. Like last year I was, uh, with the lockdown and everything doing meditations. And I was like, you know, if I can, even right now we could all go take a breath, ah, you know, for five seconds, take another breath ah, and let our thoughts relax let our face relax just a bit. And you're like, I'm at peace. So if I'm at peace for five seconds or feel love, and I've got to that place in meditation, but peace and love, it's there all the time. It's usually when I'm not thinking as much and not going through the world, judging the world with my eyes and my mental constructs that is based on the programming that I received to uh, block the flow of the love and peace that's always there. So that peace and that love is just in us all the time. So last year I was like, well, if I can have it for five seconds, I can have it for all day long. I know I, I know it's there the whole time. The peace inside, the love in, our, in your heart, I know it's there all day. It's there. So how do I open myself up to it? So, yeah, while I was in Sedona, um, leading up to writing that first book, that was when, like, I was like, okay, well, I have this, also another habit. I, I love plants. When I water them, I'm, I'll sing to them. I'm like, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I sing this I love you song. I've been doing this for years. All these things, all that, like, sing a I love you song, it just, like, builds up to, to get us to our more of our natural state than the program state that I learned from society, which is, it tends to be, you know, this group versus this group, our country versus the other country. You know, it goes back to like middle school, Aurora Hills Middle School Mustangs versus whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever, Columbia Middle School, F them, you know, mm -hmm. we're playing them in basketball, F them. And we're just like, and I look back and I'm like, we're just playing basketball. Doesn't mean we have to want to fight them, you know, on the weekend, especially in high school and all this stupid stuff that happened. But um, just learning to love, learning to love and then realizing we are love. It's like not something we need to learn. It's something that we are. So when you're like from that truth, those divine truths, and I'm just, I'm learning all this new stuff from the books that come through me. I'm living the messages in the books and life is beautiful. I'm seeing it the way that it always was, but I missed it because my mind was so like going on to the next thing to do, caught up in whatever political situation mm -hmm. uh, or this tension is happening in the world. Let's talk about it. Let's focus on it. That stuff can drift away. It can be in some other reality because the present moment so beautiful. Just even talking to you, your face, like your blueness in your eyes <laughs> it's, and your smile. It's beautiful. And I, I'm programming my physical senses, my eyes and ears and touch, taste and smell to experience the world around me as glory, beauty, love, light, and heaven in every moment. And man... The way that the 
waves crash on the beach. I never heard them before. And now it's like a symphony. It's like when you see, uh, it's different, but when you see fireworks on 4th of July, you don't really know what's coming next exactly. And they're going, and then there's another one. And oh, oh, it's like that to my ears. It's like crashes and like, and just it, a never ending symphony of sound on the beach. It was always there. And I look at the beach and the way that the sun glistens off the waves and the colors and the, man, the present moment is so good. <laughs> it's easier for me to, to stay in it at the beach because nature's vibration is really high. But uh, gosh, to take that and recalibrate ourselves, that's really what happened to me for the last year. I was in Sedona hiking like two to four to six, eight hours a day filming YouTube content for my YouTube channel. Um, but my mind was able to like get out of the, my program habitual pattern, career oriented, some of those things, the stresses of life, and then got me deeper and deeper, opened up my mind and then words of a book drop in <laughs> and then more words and more words and more words. And now I'm on the fourth book. So yeah, it's amazing. It's pretty incredible. The, you know, the present moment, it is, and that's one thing I love about this, by the way. It's like, uh, we're very much here. There's not, like, you can hear some birds chirping maybe in the background or something. But, Those uh, birds are always singing. <laughs> Everywhere I go, they sing now. We have to listen. I didn't hear them two, two years ago. I didn't yeah. hear them. I didn't even hear them. <laughs> and they're so beautiful. It's like this little, like, just chirping Garden of Eden style. It's amazing. Well, there, there's a whole... I mean, there's industries built around teaching people how to chase the present moment, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I find that fascinating. I, I wonder, because we all have our, our ways we either enter into it and then we're locked into it maybe forever. I still remember when I first started creating space to where I could like see my thoughts before sharing them, you know, I'm like, oh, this is a new, a new experience. Yeah. You know, the different books or beliefs we'll call it like the watcher mm -hmm. or whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, because we have as, as humans, we have something I think unique, at least it seems unique compared to most other animals. Maybe there's some animals like dolphins or something that I don't, I haven't quite figured out yet, but, uh, or that we haven't quite figured out yet. I put out there in a, in a piece of science paper, but that have, I think it's called metacognition, mm. where you're thinking about thinking. And there's value to that in terms of if we want to colonize Mars or build blockchain, like, you know, those are things that humans are uniquely doing compared to other animals. Mm -hmm. However, if you get caught up in thinking about thinking, it becomes a disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, and it can run rampant. Then you have on, on the other side, you know, you can inundate your mind with entertainment or we were talking a bit about sugar. You know, there are, I believe, disciplines that if we overindulge, um, especially around, there's a really great book I, I love called Outwitting the Devil. Mm -hmm. And it talks about food, sex, and thinking being the three um, primary things to, to fight the devil in terms of having uh, discipline around those three things. Yeah. So if you overindulge in food, you sort of dull your senses and are more likely to give in to, you know, weakness or um, negative thoughts or lowering your vibration. And that's a big yeah. topic in Sedona around food. So how long did it take you? Um, we'll go ahead and run through the some books. Let's hear about some books. Some books? Yeah. Yeah, so we have the Book of Love and the Book of Light and the Book of Heaven. Uh, they're all available on Amazon now as ebook or paperback. Um, there's another book that I'm writing now. I, I actually speak the books, which I think you know this now. But um, so I've spoken and recorded the fourth book. It's so good. Um, and let me just uh, you want, I don't know if I've shared this with you. Um, okay. So the way that this happened, I was in Sedona about this time last year. They, the lockdown had 
happened around this time, whenever the lockdown happened. And I just felt this cloud, like oppressive energy over. I was just, I live in wind and sea. So it's like, I live half block from the beach. That's his like least oppressive possibility of any place probably. Cause it's like the ocean nature's <laughs> right there to like, we're good, you know, making just good vibes and like just health and well being is right there on that beach. But I felt this oppression energy and I was here for a few weeks, you know, or maybe a month of that lockdown. And I was like running on the beach, exercising all this stuff at a, or near the beach. But I was like, I got to get out of here. So I went to Sedona for two weeks. And I remember I was going to rent a car because I was like, let me rent. I just want to go in like style. So I was like, let me get a nicer <laughs> car. So I'll rent one for a couple weeks. And I go to rent the car the day that I'm leaving. And they're like, hey, so where are you headed? I was like, oh, I'm going to Sedona. And they're like, oh, you can't take it out of state. And I'm just like, what? And they're like, yeah, they changed the policies, you know, for whatever reason. And I was like, so I went to three places, no rentals. They all said you can't take it out of state. Hmm. You know, and in those situations, I'm like, what the, you know, like the humanness in me is like, <laughs> what? I, I don't, I don't get as upset these days. But, <laughs> but at that point, I was like, WTF. Um, but then I just took my car. I was like, all right, I'm taking my car. So I drove out to Sedona for two weeks. And after about a week and a half, I was like, I'm not going back. The, the vibe there is really high. There's red rock formations all over the town. The people are very spiritual, conscious, healthy, freedom oriented. Um, it, it, it's a beautiful, awesome place. And I was like, I need to add another week. So I had another week. Then halfway through that week, I need to add another week. So I kept adding weeks and I stayed out there for like five or six months. And I realized, I was like, oh, God knew I needed the car. So, <laughs> you know, if I would have rented the car, I would have had to come back. But uh, so I went out there and just hiked and was out in nature. And I realized the value of nature for everybody. Probably the easiest thing someone can do to really improve their life in a big way is to go out in nature every day for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, even more than that. What things do we do that pollute our consciousness? I'll, I'll just make a list. News, weird TV shows, <laughs> horror, horror movies, strange, like strange concepts that, like I know I'm imagining my life and everyone does this either consciously or not. Like stop. Imagine the way that I want my life to go. This meal, this new thing, this career, like we're imagineering our life. So if you stop and imagine your life for 5, 10, 15 minutes and just like, okay, this concept is what I'm getting, what I'm being, this is real. And then you say, okay, 15 minutes of that. Now I'm going to watch the news for an hour and pump that into your <laughs> imagination and then watch some weird, 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 <laughs> weird ass TV show or movie habitually. And it's like, oh, that's so interesting. I can't stop watching. You know, there are a lot of things that are interesting, but do you love it? Love. I'm talking, you love laughing with your friends. You love experiencing joy. You, there's things that we love. There's other things that the world has taught us that are interesting, that are hook us mentally. Um, but just saying, um, substitute. Instead of watching the news or show, go out in nature for an hour. See how your life transforms. Because when I got to Sedona, I'm hiking for two, four, six, eight hours a day. And over time, it just let my mind be more at ease. I stopped my habitual patterns of checking my email for like, do, <sighs> do I have my agent? Because I'm an actor. So it's like agents texting, agents emailing. Mm -hmm. I got to be on it. Uh, I'm, I probably check my email 50 times a day, maybe 100, maybe more. And the, I, I checked emails and all the messaging systems the moment I woke up. Because if I wasn't on the set, I wanted to be on the set. So maybe there's a last call or, you know, there's a, like, they need me. So I'd, I'd be checking first thing in the morning. So it's like, boom, wake up, go into the patterns. Um, but I just got more and more at ease. And then uh, I went to this place called Angel Valley, which is a precious place. It's like, um, Sedona is very high, but it's amazing. And this to me is like the, 
my favorite of all of it. And it's a, it's a big outdoor open space area. There's mountains on both sides. They have Archangel Michael and other mm. angels have shrines. They have labyrinths you can walk through, which are like these mazes on the ground, like 50, 70 feet wide circular things. You can look them up. The, w- the word sounds weird because I think there's probably some movies called Labyrinth or something, scary movie <laughs> in the past. But um, I think it, it just means like puzzle or something. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so yeah. I went to Angel Valley. Well, it was interesting because the weeks that I would normally line up where I was staying at certain resorts didn't line up. And I was like, okay, I'll go stay in Angel Valley at a cabin for a day, for one night. So I stay there one night. And then the next day, they're having some full moon sound bath uh labyrinth walk Mm. so i go do that and i meet some girls when i get there there's like 15 people doing it talk for a couple minutes and then we start the walk and i'm doing the labyrinth walk and what the lady told us her name's angel heart she told us when you walk these things it resets your it does like a reset to your system and it sinks your right and left hemisphere of your brain so i I walked in first out of everyone because everyone walks in a row get to the center, we do the sound bath. And then uh, afterwards, for some reason, I was like, you know, I'll leave last because I came in first for some reason. So I'm like, I'll leave last. And everyone leaves. And then there's one dude still meditating. I'm like, okay, I'll wait for him. <laughs> and he medit- and he's like, he just keeps meditating there for like half hour. And uh, I'm just sitting there like, for some reason, I thought he should go before me. So I waited for him to start going. And then he starts walking and he just like one step, two steps, three steps. And then he just pauses, looks around, breathes. And it took like half hour to walk out of something. Should have taken like six minutes. Um, <laughs> and But something inside me is like, now you know what Jesus feels. Got to be infinitely patient with, mm. with myself or with people around me or those sort of things. <laughs> so it was interesting because um, so the, the next morning I lost those girls. The next morning, I have a note on my cabin, and it's like, hey, we want to hang out with you, and it's from one, one of the girls, uh, women on a retreat. I say girls, you know, girls, boys, what's that, whatever. Um, but uh, so I end up hanging out with them that night, and then while we're hanging out, talking and, you know, just talking, having like cool spiritual type of talk and laughing, having fun, getting to know each other. But it's like, these are girls that I already know, like something in me knows them, Um like knows them already. And one of them says, I heard about a book called The Book of Love by Jesus. And I just, I'm like, that sounds amazing. You know, where would I get that book? She says, I heard it got destroyed or taken out of the Alexandria library. And I'm thinking maybe she's got the secret scroll or something. So I was mm-hmm. like, do you, I was like, do you have the book? She's like, no. It's like, where can I get it? She says, I don't know. And then she just says, but if you want it, you'll find it. And I just remember thinking, Jesus, I want that book, you know, (laughs) just thinking I'll get the book, you know, like, who knows, someone else has it, they'll give it to me. So the next morning, I'm in my cabin, get up, and I'm supposed to leave every day from Angel Valley, like, just stay in one night, two nights, and then I get up, go for a run, cold plunge in the river. So my vibe's really high take a shower and then I just get this little voice this tiny little words drop into my mind and it says the book of love by Jesus the Christ channeled by Daniel Prock I'm like that's me Daniel Prock (laughs) you know (laughs) and then the words just said my beloved it is with great love that I share these ideas with you that's all I know and you know this is this kind of new process of receiving messages in my mind and then I was just like, okay, let me just speak this thing and record it on my phone. So I just took my phone out. I actually have this little mic. So I just clear my mind and then each word drops in. And it's like a few words drop in at a time. It's not like I get like paragraphs that I'm like, oh, I'm going to be reading all this stuff. It's like I just get a few words or barely part of a sentence. So I just speak, say the words, say the words, say the words. And the energy just builds up in me and it's like this glowing golden light energy. That's the way I describe it. Like just feels so elated. And after that first segment was done, I look and it's like a 40 minute speech. And I remember I opened my eyes 
And I look at the room around me and it's glowing a bit. And I just remember just the little part of me inside is like, stay in this feeling, stay in this. Don't just get up and start walking around, like mm-hmm. milk this. Mm-hmm. This is how you're supposed to feel all the time. This, like, this is available for you to feel all the time. Stay here. So I just stayed at peace, looked around, closed my eyes, look, you know, like for like 15, 20, I don't know how long, but for a while, I just stayed in it, stayed in it. And then I got up, start walking a little bit or just moving around. And then the book of love by Jesus, the Christ channel by Daniel Prague, chapter two. And I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so I record that. And then, uh, I didn't know how much, like, am I getting some big old Bibles? Mm-hmm. This, how long is this? Yeah, last? this huge thing. <laughs> so I'm like, I guess I'm staying one more night in Angel Valley. So I stay another night. And then the next morning, chapter three, chapter four, drop in my mind. I record those. And then I just start typing them out. Um, then a few days later, I went to this cool coffee shop, Creekside Cafe, and was talking to some friends. Some girl overhears us. She's like, are you Brother Dan? My friends all call me Brother Dan. She's like, are you Brother Dan? She's like, I was supposed to meet you with Reed in Angel Valley like a week or two ago. She's like, I publish books on Amazon. I know how to do it. I'll just show you how to do it. So she shows me how to do it a few times. I get a book cover made and just I had this vision. I was like, it's got to be a golden heart with wings. And it's, it's like pure gold. It's got to be, you know, just whatever's on the cover now. So I just went down the path, figured out how to publish on Amazon. Um, and while I'm figuring that out for three, four weeks, five weeks, something like that, I wake up one morning, take a shower, and then the book of light. By Jesus the Christ, channel by Dad. <laughs> yeah, so then I get the book of light drops in. So I got the book of love, then the book of light. And then I finally came back to, to Wind and Sea, La Jolla, around uh, Thanksgiving. So closer to Christmas, the next book, the book of heaven, starts dropping in my mind. And I recorded the first segment. And then something in me was like, I should just film myself. You know, so... And I, and the words will drop in my mind for a few days. I have to like, let me just stop everything I'm doing and get this message and speak it. And it's so cool because I I speak the messages. Um, yeah, so I, I filmed myself getting chapter two and the rest of the book of heaven. I filmed myself on the fourth book, the book of life, every, every segment of it. And it's like four, I think there were like 400 minutes worth of me speaking for that that book's longer but um it's amazing because when like last night i was i've spoken the book of life and then i go back and now i'm like editing typing it out Mm -hmm. well i have someone transcribe it for me so that saves me some time but then i got to make sure every word is is perfect in there Mm -hmm. and organize it all into the book and i'm going through this book of life and i'm like this is the best book I've ever read, you know, because it's a message coming through me and it's part of me. I, that's part of my interesting experience. It's like, it's coming through me, so it must be me, but it's some higher version of me that really already has this book organized and then blessing me really to give me this message, to give to the world, to uplift everyone's consciousness. Because these books are... I've grown up Christian, read the Bible a lot. There's a lot of, uh, let me just say, dramatic stories in the Bible. You know? Me, I don't need to see drama in anything. I want want the Garden of Eden because the Garden of Eden is the original plan for all of us to live in something magnificent, glorious. But that's the unlearning of these conditioned programs to, like, see the beauty in everything, steer our life towards paradise and something glorious and magnificent know that we are glorious and magnificent, those sort of things. So, yeah, Uh, that book last night, I'm going through the first chapter, just typing it all out. And I was like, this thing is so good. Uh, So good. But yeah, that's how the books have come to me. I didn't think I'd ever write a book. I've been wanting to make comedy movies. Comedy movies is my dream, (laughs) my main one. I was like, I want to laugh and joke around with like my brother and other friends, uh, actor friends and colleagues and all this stuff, like just 
let people go to a movie and have a great enjoyable ride, you know, and just like, oh, that was amazing. I want people to feel like that. Um, never thought I'd write any books, but God had some different plan, you know. Well, and that's, you know, it's actually, it's interesting how you, how you started the story in terms of feeling oppressed and in wind and sea with the mm -hmm. lockdown. And then, you know, what came to mind when you were talking about that too, is, I mean, I remember, you know, running through the cove here and there being police mm -hmm. lined up at the park mm -hmm. with caution tape yeah. saying, you can't enjoy the park mm -hmm. like that. It had a very strange feeling. There was there weren't many people. They were like, I remember running all along the coast in the morning. There'd be three other people, and they were a hundred years old, so nobody was going to mess with them to be out, you yeah. know, walking by the beach. I actually took this picture of a a, a white haired couple on a bench with caution tape on it. Mm -hmm. It was like the most beautiful, looking out into the fog in the ocean. Um, but I, I bring that up because you know you talk about polluting your mind and watching entertainment. I remember just when you're forced to stay inside, like it's, it's almost, you really have to work extra hard to fight the pollution. I was uh, dating a, a woman at that point and like, come on, let's, like, we have to get outside. We have to go into nature. Like we mm -hmm. can't be inside all the time. This is good. And fighting and fighting that and traveling to do that. And people going, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you trying to go get in nature? But when you, you know, walking through your story at the end, you talked about bringing people together through comedy too. And there's something to be said for being um, sometimes one-to-one, -one, um, sometimes with a group of people. Like that laughter, I went to a comedy club in LA like mm -hmm. two weeks ago, maybe. And the comedians were laughing because it's like in this alleyway type thing where there's no roof. And they, they said, how is this even safe? Like this is, CDC says, Viruses don't live in places where there's no roof. You know, right, it's, right. Just, it's kind of funny. Yeah. But that human connection, mm -hmm. and you can feel the the joy of the laughter too. So it sounds like you are, you know, you've been bringing your your purpose and your joy to people. Um, maybe not with the laughter yet. Or I don't know. I'll have to ask you a little about your acting. But with this book, I, I was reading it the first night I started reading it. And I just started smiling, just reading it. I was yeah. like, these are, like, look at these words. Like, I am, and it was all, I mean, love is in there. I, I want to almost tally yeah. how many times it's written in there. Um, it's really, really, it's really powerful. So how many, you have three right now that are published? Yeah. Three. So there's Book of Love, Book of Light, and the Book of Love. Heaven. Heaven. Yeah. Heaven. That's the blue one. Yeah. Okay. That one has some meat to it too. So, yeah, okay. Um, that's that one. Wow. Boom. Oh yeah. So for those that are, that are listening, the book of love is a, it's a red book. I think there's 50, how many pages in there? Yeah. It might be like 62, 62, 66. And I just okay. got it translated into Spanish. Okay. There the, we go. The, the, the girl that I heard this from, I say girl, but you know, she's like 25 or whatever. I almost said girl about the girl's dating, but when yeah, you switched, I'm like, I'm going to say woman because I don't want to, I'm going to get fired for this. Like from Well, the... I thought, you know, like, you never know how someone's going to take like, if it's like, yeah, I was dating this girl. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. He, uh, she, they, it, yeah. it's like super yeah. complicated. Yeah. And, you know, it's like my last girlfriend, she'd say like, hey boy, hey, you know, like mm -hmm. she'd say like kind of funny to me. So I was like, what's up girl? You know, it's like that. But uh, yeah, so she does spanish english translation mm. like part of her career and so she translated the book of love into el libro del amor so that's on i just got it published on amazon i just got tomorrow i'll get the first proof copy of it to make sure i like i need to make sure you know get the printed copy in my hand to make sure like the whole thing's perfect but uh yeah so that for Spanish speakers. So that's the interesting part too. And she's like my sister, like best friend, sister. I love her so much. And just how this whole thing came about, like through her, you know, it, it kind of, she said it, the book of love. And then somehow it gets in my mind and Jesus is speaking it through me. Um, and now it's just part of me. At first it was like, you know, what are other people going to think about this? You know, there might be a little bit of that in me 
But now it's like these messages are so pure and good and great. They're glorious. And what they're doing is, I, I get different ways that I describe what they're doing as the new, like this next book, the book of life. That one, um, the introduction happened at the last video that I filmed. It's like the whole thing was done. And I was like, I think there's another something else. I, <laughs> like I, I, I knew it was over, like closing messages, record that. There's like 17 videos. And then I think there's an introduction. So I was like, okay, let me stop myself and record that. And it's like introduction, pure gold. And it's like gold is an element uh, or material that you experience on this beautiful planet Earth. Gold has certain properties and characteristics that make it more valuable um, to yourself and in society. I'm paraphrasing some of it, but it's like gold is non-reactive. Mm. It doesn't react with oxygen and, and other elements, the purest of gold. So it doesn't tarnish, uh, it's non-corrosive, it, doesn't rust like those sort of things like us other metals are reactive and it's like when you let life be because life is that's a big part of the book of life is life is we give it meaning and definitions yeah but there's no given meaning or definition to anything we experience we define it based on our programming and when we let it be and we become non-reactive and our mind becomes non-reactive to what we experience, we become like pure gold and we're being refined right now. Like these books are great in helping us refine ourselves to be the pure gold that we already are. Um, when our mind's not reacting to the new story, like we used to get pissed off about this or that or whatever is going on, oh, this politician, blah, blah, you know, it's like half the world's mad about what the guy does and half the world thinks it's great. What if it just is, and you can, you, we make our, you know, we steer our lives, we can have opinions, but the ways that our minds get triggered by people, places, circumstances, all this stuff, uh, family members, all that stuff is like that reactivity of the mind is like rusting ourselves mm. when we should just be like bright, shiny light. And we are bright, shiny light. We are God's light and God's love. We are God's love all, every moment. Ah, and then the mind reacts to whatever happened in our life. And then that love goes into ah, well, anger, w doubt, worry, frustration, all these things. It's like a, a muscle too, the way I see mm -hmm. love. Like the more you, one, the more you talk about it, mm -hmm. the more you practice it. Um, you know, sometimes the, the people that are the hardest to maybe love are the ones that, that usually in my experience need it the most yeah. or can benefit. I don't like the word need too much, yeah. but can benefit the most. Yeah. And you can build your own capacity for love by understanding, you know, why, why, when you talk about getting triggered, that's usually a, like you said, reactive. It's a, it's a response. It's a, um, but we, it means we're taking something personally mm -hmm. usually, or it, uh, causes some tension into something in our lives. And if it's by somebody else, it's, it's actually a neutral event and we can assign a, a better or a different meaning to it so that we're not so reactive. Mm -hmm. So I can go, oh, this person, you know, cut me off, took the parking spot and then, uh, I could flip them off and yell at them. It's not going to probably make, it might make me feel good temporarily. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. It depends on where you're at. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You got to be careful with that. Yeah. Uh, but I could also turn around because there's a, there's a church right here. And actually it's kind of when they were doing outdoor meetings, it was mm -hmm. really interesting, like how parking was going. And I was watching these people like run into church and be so like angry and rushed. And they relate to church and find each other for parking spots. I'm like, that's not like you're going to church like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. But also understand like there's, you know, who knows what happened before that event for them to rush into the parking spot yeah. or cut somebody off. Or maybe they're coming from the hospital, visiting a, a super sick relative and church is really important to them. And they, they really want to pray, mm -hmm. you know, for that, loved one doesn't it's not really an excuse to 
to do anything. But the minute we take ourselves out of it and try to um, think about either the other possibilities or mm-hmm. just understanding the other person, I, I find that um, we're able to give yeah. a little bit more love as well. Yeah. And that's responding versus reacting. Yeah. And it's what you, like what you had mentioned earlier, the thinking about what you're thinking about, <laughs> that type of thing. Yeah. Because if you're just thinking it and reacting like, you know, just have that thinking reaction. But if you're like, oh, let me look at what I'm, let me pause to look at how I'm feeling about this or want to instinctively, maybe not how I've been programmed, let me just say how I've been programmed to respond to this stimulus, you know? I think a lot of it is is reducing our self-identity. Yeah. You know, you have to have a, a healthy ego Mm-hmm. In order to create things, to really function in the world, to be confident in tying your shoe, like you have to have some ego. So you can't totally, you know, delete the ego. But when you reduce that um, self-importance, in a sense, like understanding that, yeah, you are one of God's children, a spiritual being, whatever that thing is that that a particular person resonates with in terms of who they are, that's important. But understanding how it's more of a shared experience versus a going back to what you're talking about with middle school me versus you mm-hmm. it's a, a we together yeah type of experience yeah and oh. that that's what i just sense i just know this i'm living it and i think there's millions and gonna be billions of people all over the world living it just a unity consciousness living more from love living in harmony <laughs> And how do I say, believing more in the way you want the world to be mm-hmm. than the way you see it with your eyes, believing more in your imagination than the situation, um, and living in from a lot of, just depends on the, a lot of people say different words. I I call it heaven on earth, paradise. Some people are like a new earth. Some people say like, uh, but it's like a a love-based reality, a unity-based reality, oneness, harmony, abundance, peace, health. Um, And I talk a lot about heaven on earth. I just, I believe it. I've been believing it for about maybe 10 years is my guess when, or maybe like eight, when I moved out to San Diego, I just started getting different perceptions about time, you know, learning about the the present moment and, you know, just the idea of, you know, what time is it? You know, what, and what time is it when I'm talking to my dad back in Denver? It's mm-hmm. an hour apart, but we're on the phone right now. It's not an hour different. You know, it's like, oh, it's three o'clock here and two o'clock here. No, it's not. It's now. You hear that? Yeah. It's happened it's happened twice now. I wonder. It's like a chord thing, maybe. If you're, if, you're, if you're good with it, we can go. I read about it a little bit, but it's like uh I don't know. Is that okay? Is it bugging you? I don't know if it'll I don't know if we heard it on the audio. I think it's just for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well then that's I'm I'm okay then. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was reading it and it's like, oh audio coming. I was yeah, it's like a little bit of feedback, but yeah. Yeah. So just learning about the present or the now and everything is now. And when I wake up in the morning, it's now. And the next birthday I have, it's going to be right now. And, you know, take five seconds, check your time again. It's still right now. So anchoring into the now. Also anchoring into the here. I remember driving to my sister's in Lemon Grove on the freeway and just driving along. And I was like, where am I? Just this awareness (laughs) thing. Where am I? I glanced down in my chair and I said, I'm right here while I'm driving 70 miles an hour. Then a few seconds later, where am I now? Like when I look down, I'm just sitting in this chair. But when I look up, I'm flying through the world. I'm still right here. And then I was like, so am I really going 70 miles an hour? Or am I right here and the world's just passing past me? Mm. You know, and just like, so it's, it's just like pl- playing with that idea. And then I show up at my sister's place. You know, I'm still right here, smack dab in the middle of my whole universe every single moment. And, you know, I grew up in the church. So it's like when you die and you go to heaven, I was like, 
what time's it going to be? It's going to be right now. Where am I going to be? It's going to be right here. So why would I wait for it? At first, I was like, why would I wait for that time to experience it? I'm going to draw it into me. Like, that's the, my way that I looked at it. It's like, I'm going to have heaven now because everything's here and now. And then the more that I've anchored into that, it's more like heaven is here and now. Heaven on earth is here and now. In every moment, it's always been here. In fact, you are love, you are light, and you are heaven, and you are the highest realms of the heavens in this present moment. And when we have that in all aspects of our being and our knowing and the world around us, there's a lot of layers to the way that the, the reconditioning process happens. Yeah. I was just thinking of the word layers. Like that's, I was, there's so I was, many layers. Yeah. Because so let, let's let's go through a couple of layers, right? Because I'm also thinking, uh, like, think of how fortunate we are right now, where we're at. Southern California, mm -hmm. yeah, had some challenges in terms of being oppressed, but I mean, we've got this and that's good. beautiful. Is it is the sun coming in a little? Yeah. Okay, we, we can we can move, we can shift, adjust a little. All right. <laughs> those skylights, those just got clean, so they're extra bright. So. Nice. <laughs> uh, you know, we're in a, a a, a very fortunate position to be where we're at in life, right? And that's not true for for all people in terms of uh, location alone. I mean, just being in America is a very fortunate position to be in the world, regardless of how somebody feels about the politics or, um, you know, it's compared to some other places. I'd prefer to be born here. Yeah. Uh, and one of the words I'm, I've been tracking in the Old Testament is the word the matrix, like Matrix pops up in the Old Testament. Really? Uh, several times, <laughs> many times. You, yeah. I didn't know that. What <laughs> oh, does it say? So I've been it? reading. So, okay, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix, old school. Yeah. It's in the Bible. So the lady that wrote the Matrix, there's an app called Clubhouse that was getting pretty popular mm -hmm. for a bit. I don't know if it's still very popular. Yeah, I've heard uh, of it. It's like an audio social media. And the lady that wrote the Matrix was on there. She's like uber spiritual um and that's one of her her messages that she was sharing is that it says it in the bible you can pretty much prove it to yourself with your thinking and your actions that you know part of god's message is that you have the opportunity with your spoken word with your training of your thinking to create heaven on earth now yeah um you know, some people are not very into organized religion uh, because, you know, for whatever reason, either don't believe or find that the church can carry a lot of fear in it, mm -hmm. which is actually in opposition to, you know, uh, a love-based message. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although there's some... It, it, fear can be a motivator and a driver, you know, but it's a, usually a temporary versus a long-term healthy love-based thing but when you so when you say heaven on earth like how do you think about it in terms of you know someone living in another part of the world that's experiencing what seems to be just like terror on earth like how how do you bring that message to them how to how does it impact them how does god play a role in that yeah that's a that's a really good question i've uh I like to take something that can be really, really big and simplify it a bit. So I've got an affirmation that I've been writing out maybe for a year or two, but it's, I'm living a beautiful life filled with love, health, wealth, wisdom, and freedom. And I'll write this in this notepad that I use to like, you know, just document things. And as I go through the day, take notes and ideas and all this stuff. I'll write that every day. I'm living a beautiful life in a beautiful world filled with love, health, wealth, wisdom, and freedom. That's what I would say is heaven on earth in a simple version. So what would that be? Love would be emotionally. I am living loving, joyful, peaceful, happy, elated, bliss, laughter, good times. So emotionally, I'm up here. Health. Lack of health, like physical body, health, well-being. So emotionally, I'm good. 
physical body, I'm good. Wealth, I've got an abundant supply. My needs are met. The things I like and want and need, you know, like the physical world around me, wealth versus lack of wealth. And then wisdom, my mental body, divine ideas, cl- clear thinking, uh, great use of use of my mind. And then freedom would be like freedom to express your soul, be your true self, have more freedoms and liberties in this world. So if you think about that, it's like emotionally, emotions, body, mind, physical world, and freedom. Is there anyone in this world that experiences any one of those things? You know, like, let's just say, is is it possible to go from lack of health to health? Is it possible to go from lack of wealth to wealth? Lack of mental clarity to a good mind. Uh, and so, and uh, what was the other one? Health, wealth, emotion. Is it possible to go from feeling anxious and fear and those sort of emotions restricted to expanded love habitually? Are there people already doing it? Are there people doing it in one of those areas? Are there people doing it in all five? And I've heard, I hear people um, over time, it's like I'd hear, say, Bruce Lipton or just different speakers. You know, I'm listening to their podcasts or their books or whatever, and they'll just drop a little bit like heaven on earth. That would be like heaven on earth. That, mm. You know, so I'm like, that guy gets it. These guys get it. Like, there's a lot of people who get it. So it's not like, oh, that sounds impossible. Really? Your body's healthy. Your physical environment's good. You're emotionally, you're happy, loving, peaceful. You know, your, your mindset's good. And then you're living a good life with a sense of freedom. So that would be a heaven on earth type of existence in a simplified way. And you're saying you can do this pretty much anywhere, like regardless of what your circumstances are, where you're at, like that's legitimate heaven on earth. Or? Well, you might need to shift yourself into <laughs> better things. Cause when I, when I was, uh, I've been living in wind and sea for about five and a half years now. Before that, I was at my sister's place you, and you know, the sun's coming in. Did you want to move a little bit still? Yeah, or? Okay. Is it? I guess it's a different time of year. I'll have to think about that as I set this up in the future. (laughs) Yeah, I was at my sister's place and I didn't have much money. And I had I had limiting beliefs about money, about prosperity, about like all sorts of things. Um, And I had to heal those. I I had to fix those limit limiting beliefs that I had. You can kick that thing over. It's fine. <laughs> Don't usually edit much on the podcast, but we might have some editing today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. So I remember I was on some TV show. It was like some dating show in San Diego um, early in my acting career. And there was some like kind of personal growth workshop that they had us go through like as like people who seen who likes each other and all this stuff. Simplified version is they gave us all a pillow and they're like, write some like idea or concept or something about yourself. And I was like, I just wrote heaven on that pillow. Hmm. Uh, And I took the pillow back to my place and I was just staying in a room. Wasn't well organized. uh, Wasn't terrible, but it wasn't even close to good. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make my life as heavenly as I can. Not having much money. I was walking up the street to the 99 cent store. I'd have like $8 Mm -hmm. at that. This is like eight, seven years ago. Might have like 12 bucks, you know? And I'm like, all right, this will give me, you know, 11 items at the 99 cent store to eat. And um, and I'm not saying it. I just had limiting beliefs and I didn't, the money thing wasn't flowing. Now it flows so much better. (laughs) But but I, I made my life as heavenly as I could within my environment. So I'd make the bed every day. I bought some little plaques at the 99 cent store that said like, love is all there is, or they have those affirmation plaques in there. Mm -hmm. So I buy, I upgraded the room, you know, organized it. I made it as heavenly as I could. So I did that to my external environment. And then months later, I got some marketing job working for Coca-Cola of all things. (laughs) 
which is like, yeah, I know I'm giving people poison. Mm. I know I'm, you know, giving people poison as, you know, free Coke every day, but uh, that somehow got me, <laughs> somehow got me enough money to get my place in Wind and Sea. And uh, yeah, so that, that's just, a, it's like, you know, I could have been, oh my God, could have been health food. <laughs> <laughs> could have been, could have been some suja drink or something, something healthy. But, um, but I made my life as, as heavenly as I could. And I feel like, and decluttered. Mm -hmm. decluttered made my life as heavenly as I could gave away a lot of stuff like gave away clothes that I wasn't using or wearing um and now I've gotten to a point but that's the simplified version of I was going to say you can make your life as heavenly as possible within your current situation and have that unfold into the next thing and have that unfold into the next thing and have a, a general uh expectation uh and I'll just say reading these books, they've, whatever I thought I was doing as far as like a good job improving my life, when we, it's learning to create our life. All right. So if you pause for a moment or if anyone listening to this pauses for a moment, closes their eyes and just imagines a cell in your body, like in the core of yourself, imagine a cell. And then imagine the DNA strand in that cell and just follow that DNA strand. The DNA goes, it's like miles of DNA. So you go to the end of that and you reach the very first cell of your body. That's what is termed the primordial cell. Now dwell in the perfection of the creation of that cell. And then go to before the perfection of the thoughts and the planning and the energy and what made that cell, the perfection of that. And when you dwell in that space, I do it several times a day. I'll dwell in that. I'll just sit there. Okay. Remember the perfection of the creation of me. I am perfection. God only makes perfect things. God made me and I can live in a world and God gave me freedom of choice to believe in imperfections and then to experience those. But God made me perfect and God made everything perfect and it all works perfectly. Within that though, well, when we can live in that place of beauty, glory, love, light, perfection, and that we are God's masterpiece, live from there and then recondition the mental body, our thoughts and our mind, then recondition our physical body, then recondition our subconscious programming, our belief system, then recondition our world around us, um, our emotional patterns, our behaviors. Our, it's, there's a lot to recondition from perfection because that's our true state, the original plan for our life. God always wanted us to be in that garden of Eden where we're just like, life is just so good and beautiful and glorious. And, it, and what I'm experiencing now that I've written the books, but more that I use the books as a tool, I reread them every day. I read them before I came over here. Hmm. It's like, I'm going to read a few pages because that'll go, it'll get my vibe really high and it'll get my mind lined up because mm -hmm. my mind still is drifting and handling yeah. life situations. Mind, and right? Right. Navigating traffic on the right. way over here. Yeah. <laughs> can't, can't levitate over here yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Soon. Yeah. That's yeah. why I said. Yeah. I know. Thank you for saying that because <laughs> I've said that as a joke, but sometimes you say stuff as jokes because something inside you knows it's going to be true. Like we are, we are God's <laughs> infinite light, which is light that travels at infinite speeds. The 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 way that we think we measure light at what is it one uh, one hundred eighty six thousand miles per second? That's the way photons travel. God's light is infinite. So infinitely faster and always expanding light, which is the same light at the core of our being, the same light that created us, the same light, which is what we are. So it, it takes, I don't know if it takes time. I'm perceiving it as time to recondition <laughs> myself, but maybe every time that I'm standing on the beach, I exercise on the beach and I'll just stand out there and like put my hands up like that. And I'm like, I'm going to send light everywhere. Um, 
God's light like a million, billion, trillion suns. What like, was one of the first questions you asked me when you when you walked in? Do you remember? You said, where are you from? I said, where are you from? <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah. I, what was my answer? It was like, mostly Earth, yeah. I think, but I'm still working on that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like, that's why I say yet sometimes, things yeah. like that, because we're constantly unraveling new information. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, of, of nature, you know, there's symmetry in nature, which is a, a form of perfect, perfection. When you look at leaves, you talked about liking plants, you know, there's yeah. things like the heliotropic effect, all these really fascinating things. This, by the way, is uh, from an artist in Sedona. Uh, her name's Shana. She lived here. And actually started having these, she called them, I think, downloads in mm -hmm. terms of what you're... you're That's like, basically, I get a download, yeah. When I think of seeing the Matrix in the Old Testament, I'm like, hey, download seems like a pretty legitimate word for yeah. receiving information. Yeah. So she gets these and she makes them for people, cool. um, which is freaking awesome, actually, yeah. And uh, so it's called a light code. And it's her, her uh, receiving a message for someone to share. That's like, that's her medium. And she just sits down and does it for like four, five, six, seven, eight hours, however long it takes and just goes to town on it. Yeah, cool. Um, I, it makes me think, you know, because also in nature, there are things like bears <laughs> and tigers mm -hmm. and they're not necessary or sharks in the ocean. Like they're not super, super friendly. <laughs> so what, Are you sure though? <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, I've, I've never seen a video of a great white shark, like, being like, hey, pet me. <laughs> I'm just playing with the idea, though. <laughs> are they really that mad or are they just hungry? Yeah, well, and that's a, like know? a wiring, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. it's not anger thing. It's just like that's what they're wired and to are do. We, there, there's good reason that <laughs> humans can be afraid of animals. Yeah. I've also seen, I saw some video on Instagram. It's like some dude... Like jumping into a pool, almost looked like if there was a like a pool at Caesar's Palace that had a bunch of tigers in it. Mm -hmm. Like the, their environment, like a, a pool as big as this room. There's t and he jumps in, swims past the tigers, pets a couple of them. The tigers kind of play with him. Yeah, maybe you saw it. It's like these big, huge animal, and then he dies, comes back and dies again. And he's like kind of playing with them the way you play with a cat, yeah. little cat. And I'm just like. The dude just doesn't fear, and when the Cats. animals don't feel our fear, then they're cool. Yeah. I've had I've had people, yeah, I, I've seen I've seen people the way that they handle a, think, a big animal. If they're not afraid, then mm -hmm. the their the animal isn't like you know. It like depends on the person's vibe. I think it's when yeah. you think of like a well, and it's interesting because you think of like you know, sadly, like a Steve Irwin that passes away after spending his whole life with mm -hmm. animals and being connected to that. Like he had an off moment. Yeah. And then you see, like, there's this guy, the real Tarzan, that I think is big on on Instagram or social Maybe media. Maybe that's the dude. He's a uh, yeah. He's like constantly in nature. There's another one I share with my nephews all the time. This like reptile dude. Then you could just tell he's like super happy. He's like, check out this snake, everybody, yeah. and he's like playing with this giant snake that wore scorpions or whatever. But he's so happy and in yeah. love with mm -hmm. that moment. Like he's connected to that, and we are you know, program to think of. Now, sharks are a different story. I've never, if someone, if I see someone playing in a pool of great whites and they figured that out, like that's a whole different level. Yeah. But uh, there are um, challenging forces yeah. on this planet too, right? Because anytime you have something like in order for that to exist, in order for there to be good and bad, which is relative, like we spoke about earlier, that's yeah. an assignment that we give things. I'm, I'm more a fan of the concept of maybe, like maybe we'll see what happens, right? Who knows? I don't. I can't predict the future. Yeah, could be good. Could be good, bad. Uh, you know, you were talking about not being able to rent a car. That's a a perfect example of well, I can get frustrated. I can say, oh, this is a bad situation. Turned out to be great. Took your own car and stayed longer. Yeah. So it's a constant state of neutrality. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are, you know, it would be hard for me to be like, oh, great white shark, you know, alligator. Like, I'm going to be neutral about that. I'm going to be like, no, thank you. <laughs> um, where, it, you know, it depends on what movies you watch growing up, man. Because <laughs> I remember point, when yeah. I was a kid, I grew up in Denver and we came out to see a couple <laughs> kind of crazy aunts and uncles with their kids. Uh, They're <laughs> kind of funny people. Uh, but they lived in Pasadena. So we drove out to see them, went to the ocean. Barely, I barely put my feet in the water because that stupid movie Jaws. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, and I grew up like when I was probably four years old. 
took swim lessons for a couple weeks. As soon as I could swim a full length, which happened fast, I was swim team. So I've been, I swam competitively all the way through high school, like year round. I swam a lot. Great swimmer. But I was, I put my feet in the ocean. I was like looking out, you know, in LA's beach and probably Santa Monica or who knows where it was out there. But um, just thinking, oh, there might, is there, where's the fin? Mm-hmm. Fuck that. You know, that's programmed. BS. Yeah. Complete BS. And I met a girl, a group of girls, women, uh, on the beach a few day, nights ago. I went out to exercise in Wind and Sea at sunset, was exercising, got a download, and then was walking back home. And it was, it was already dark. And I was like, there's one group of four women talking to each other. And uh, I was just like, you guys got the whole beach to yourself. So we started chatting. We talked for like an hour. They actually bought some of the books. They're like, yeah, we want those books. That sound amazing. Um, so they came over and bought the books. But along in the conversation, one of them was like, oh, I, I love sharks. I love sharks. And for me, when I go swim, I got to keep them out of my mind mm-hmm. because I do have fear programming about that concept. So before I go swim in the ocean, every time I'm like, it's going to be the best swim, safest swim, healthiest swim. And then even while I'm out there, if I get a thought about, you know, that potentially fear thought, because it can slip in. I'm like, God, Jesus, angels, Mother Nature loves me. Like I make myself <laughs> dolphins, 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 dolphins. <laughs> While I'm swimming in the ocean, like a quarter mile, half mile out or wherever, I'm like dolphins, dolphins, Jesus. You know, so I make myself think positive thoughts to put a positive bubble over my program, still programmed uh, perception of what could happen negative out there. So well, that almost begs the question to me of like, Thinking about thinking, here we go. Thinking about the strength of our thoughts. Mm-hmm. Like you could, when you start thinking about quantum physics and quantum entanglement, I'm diving into some of this super interesting stuff. It's really fun to read about uh, quantum physics while reading the Old Testament at the same time. Like, yeah, yeah just things popping up. It, it almost makes me wonder, like, how real is the shark? If we weren't even aware, uh, there are things if you're not aware of that can be very harmful. You know, like if you if you miss some some details and things like that can be painful. So you don't want to be like, oh, I'm in the ocean and sharks don't exist. But does that actually have an impact on a shark being in your world? You know, the thing that comes to mind <laughs> is I was in. Uh, so when I was in Vegas for four months, I went to a gym with a couple buddies and I just had headphones on and I was working out and I was really happy just to like, cause I had been, I had lived at my parents' place for like a year and my life had progressively got worse and worse money. Like all this stuff got worse and I was there. So to be like in public, just going to a gym, cute girls, getting fit, healthy. I was just happy, you know, listening to some <laughs> good music. And when we were leaving, my buddies were like, you didn't even see what happened with that girl and that dude, did you? And I was like, no, I don't. What are you talking about? They're like, this girl and this guy were having a, like, a fight, like boyfriend, girlfriend. She was yelling at him, like a big, like, in public, like, situation. Uh, and I was like, I didn't see any of it. They're like, it was happening, like, right next to you. <laughs> You know, like a loud thing that obviously people would have heard. Mm -hmm. I just had my music on and I was just doing whatever I was doing. I didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. It was right next to, they saw it. And I was like, maybe it just wasn't in my vibe. So I didn't even experience it. It's somewhere out there. But I didn't experience it. And they did, you know. So, So who knows? Maybe that's why we're starting to see UFOs and aliens now. We're finally getting on that wavelength as a as a species. Yeah. As monkeys with plans. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that last week and it's been stuck in my head. This guy's like monkeys with plans. We're monkeys with a plan. He's like, Don't take life too seriously sometimes. We're just monkey with a plan. I'm like, Oh, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. I've seen a UFO. Okay, let me hear about I that. Have some extra, <laughs> I have Sedona has expanded me into extraterrestrial <laughs> stuff for sure. Um I've met some really interesting people there. Well, is and you're reminding me, even talking about like what life is out there, 
mm-hmm. or could be out there. And I know that there's a concept, like there's life everywhere. Mm. It's whether we perceive it as like a human we can talk to, or is it a planet? That planet's still life. Every planet in our solar system is life. They might not communicate with us in the same way, but it's all alive. Um, but being in Sedona, I met people who were like, who know they're from other uh either yeah from other planetary systems who have technology that they invent and come up with to impl- to help societies here um yeah this this dude named Arcturus Ra Arcturus Ra that's a pretty strong name the dude's awesome the dude's that awesome name. he's awesome and he's like i i met him i heard of, uh, this lady had this pendant and I was like, that's a cool pendant. Um, where'd you get that? She's like, I got it from Arcturus Ra. He makes them. It's a photon key. It's called a Jedi key. Hmm. D, uh, uh, D-J-E-D-I, like Jedi. Hmm. Similar to Jedi, like we think of. Um, but And then somehow I ran into him somewhere. And this kind of cool synchronistic life. Synchronicities happen all the time, but there the vibration is really high so you just walk out the house and it's like you start meeting people and it all lines up because the vibration side is pure it's more pure harmonious so like the collective is just like self or self-organizing mm-hmm. that's what it is when the vibration is really high and the people are with love and joy and peace and they're conscious self-organizing the right people just meet at the right place at the right time when the collective the whole group of people is stressed out fear-based separation-based it's not self-organizing it takes longer to get things done more resistance more resistance more to go through yeah. yeah and nature the way nature just flows and is like this glorious masterpiece that unfolds that's how our nature is like sh- showing us the example of the way that our society should work let me just say it does work <laughs> It is working that way in the reality that we're living in because we're creating the reality that we're living in. So I want to make sure to anchor those truths, not act like they're, it should be. No, it is. The other patterns are old and those dis- are dissolving or gone. And the more people that align with um, that love and joy and peace and all that, um, then it's self-organizing. So, um, but yeah, I met him and I remember talking to him and he's like, and he said something about beta is, yeah. Is it beta brainwave state or gamma? It's beta, I think. And he said he, he's like, he said he's constantly in a beta ga- beta brainwave state. So it's more of a meditative state. And he looks up over some mountains. He's like, see, there, he's like, there's a scout ship right over there. He's like, you probably can't see it, but I can see it. Now, and there, there has to be somebody. And I. <laughs> To me, I'm just like, nowadays, I'm like, I know you, I, I know you can see it, dude. I know you can see it. Because he, like, if our, the more our mind is, like, at peace and calm, and we're in, like, a more meditative, like, and I'm still learning about these brain race states. It's nice to talk to you about them because it's reminding me to, like, go deeper into staying in that state. And I've done exercises where it's, like, breathe in to your nose, but breathe into the back of my throat. And like breathe in with my lips closed and meditate to slow myself down like that. You could, and almost like feel yourself breathing in through like your throat area. And it's almost like you can get to a point, your lips are closed, but the the air's not really moving through your nose as much. You're just, you're still breathing it in from inside here. And it slows you down, and then you get the. I hear you mean the back. You're pointing to the back of your neck. Well, I'm trying to point to like the center. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to point to the center <laughs> there. But um, have you ever heard of uh, transcendental meditation? Yeah, I haven't. Maybe I do it in in certain ways. Um, what you were describing reminds me. So I took a class on it. Maybe the early part of 2019 mm-hmm. i've been meditating for a while praying a variety of different things and i went well you know ancient wisdom says we learned a lot of really cool stuff a long time ago let's you know let's go figure out what people are teaching and you know i kind of started going on these different quests and i found that 
Um, for me, and there's also what hooked me a little bit, they do some really good marketing. They use like Jerry Seinfeld or a couple of these, uh, you know, very prolific people in life who are, you know, seem to be filled with joy and have some things figured out. Mm-hmm. Uh, for marketing, Jerry Seinfeld swears that, you know, transcendental meditation is what helped him create the show Seinfeld. Okay. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'll check it out. And, you know, my experience doing it, you, it's it, it, part of it is what you're talking about in terms of the breathing. Like I'll find myself in these certain breathing states. It's really kind of fun because you're not really, you know, my experience is that it's not really thinking, but there are thoughts that come through. Breathing will change, but it's not heavy breathing. It's not light breathing. It's like this interesting, like my body's getting just the amount of oxygen mm-hmm. it needs to be in this state. And then I also find that uh, emotions as those thoughts are coming through, some of them will bubble up and like, cause me to get warm. And it's like, oh, this is a heavy, a fear-based thought or a negative thought. And then how it feels to me is like a bubble that pops mm-hmm. and off it goes. And, uh, but that breathing spot, the highest points for me during this meditation, you're supposed to practice it two times a day, 20 minutes, uh, you know, right when you wake up. I'm not supposed to give away, I think, all the secrets. I think they charge a little bit for that. So I don't, and you're not supposed, I'm not supposed to teach anybody. Like yeah. they want to teach it a very specific way to make sure that the ancient traditional wisdom is passed on correctly. But there are some parameters. Um, but uh, yeah, when I when I do that, it it definitely structures my my breathing and my thinking for the rest of the day. So there's a lot of stuff like that. It sounds like when you were talking about writing your books, you had a very specific pattern for a living that at these specific times, were you waking up at the same time, going to sleep at the same time? Were you just in this good rhythm? Or was it that didn't really matter? It just came to you whenever. When I got the books? Yeah. Um, I think I was, I was living in a way that it, I wasn't living the patterns that I had been living the three, four, five years before, which was wake up, check an email, run to a job, Mm -hmm. drive to LA, work 15 hours, drive home, like these long days, uh, eating a lot of food Mm -hmm. because, because to get energy to like a 20 hour day, it's like, you got to snack through that thing, you know? Yeah. And when it's habitual, like they work, they work, they work a lot of hours, man. The entertainment, they they have it set up where there's just a lot of, and it, it's, I guess it can be fine, but maybe it's not fine. You know, it's like get on the set and you work eight hours and then from eight to 10 hours, time and a half from 10 to 14, 14 hours is double time. Like you go into these double times. If you work 15 hours or more, every hour is golden hour. That's for union productions. Hmm. I mean, you get your day rate for each hour. And they do it like that because they used to just work everyone and just pay them their hourly rate and work them as much as they can. At least they put in these parameters. Like if you're working someone 15 hours and you go one minute over, you're paying them the whole day rate every hour. Hmm. You know, so that like keeps productions from <laughs> slave driving people. Basically. Borderline. Yeah. yeah and, and, and people like, you know, uh, especially the crew, they're working even more because... They show up early and then I show up and we film. So if I'm working a 15, they work before that and after. Like it's it's amazing how much they have people work. Um, so, but my cortisol level was high and I only knew that because now it's like whew, my body fat level is like. Because <laughs> I reached homeostasis. I think I reached homeostasis mm. in my body the, the last year and I'm just going to stay in it. So. And I'm, I'm still putting a lot of effort into things that I love and enjoy, you know, as far as filming these books, acting jobs coming. Um, and as the world gets back to like opened up, you know, like business wise more and people are just being, I'll just say like back to like engaging normally on the set without all these extra parameters that they put in place the last, last year, I'll be making my funny movies. But, um, yeah, it's uh 
Well, it's interesting that Hollywood happens to be in California too, because yeah. if Hollywood were in Wyoming, Texas, you know, I went to a variety of states in the last year and we're doing things very specifically here compared mm-hmm. to other places. Yeah. If Hollywood were in Florida, <laughs> they would, they'd be putting 20,000 people on a set saying, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy that that part is um, opening, opening back up for you. Um, you know, there's something about San Diego too. You know, you're talking about being like thin and homeostasis and, and we are in a, a nature bound area. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, um, newspaper, like the Hoya Light. I got that thing the other day. And I was looking at the photos and it just made me think, I'm like, you know, I've asked myself a lot this over the years of living here. Why is it that, I mean, it's a pretty fit area, a pretty fit community when you think of um, not, you know, there's a, it's like it's America, so there's a certain percentage of people that are going to be outside the parameters of what's yeah. considered like a healthy body structure and even you know, even that statement is challenging now because we are, uh, as a society, in some ways saying, hey, you know, big is beautiful. And if you're a doctor, you might say big can be beautiful. It's also unhealthy uh, at a certain stage. Um, but food does, in my experience, it's a very much something that numbs us. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, maybe if we're an athlete or something like that, like eating to fuel the physical energy needed um even sometimes the mental energy we talked about sugar earlier a little mm-hmm. bit i think before we got started and having like glucose things that can feed our mind to think um do you do you have like an internal compass or something that helps guide you in a sense of the right amount of feed uh, feed <laughs> right amount of feed now we're animals now yeah. we're going back to the monkey thing but the right amount of, of, of fuel food um for your you know how you're living so a couple of years ago, around New Year's, I went to 24 Hour Fitness and they had a sign that said free body fat analysis. And I was like, man, I feel kind of weird, like having them do that on me. Mm. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll have them do it. So I have them do it. And my body fat was at 21%. And I didn't know what I looked like until my before and after pictures, basically. Um, so... The uh, I'm at 21 percent, and I just something in me is like that's way too fucking like what that's way too high is what I felt, and it was. But um, a few days later, I saw one of my buddies at Sprouts. He's this actor dude, John Michael DeWall. He's awesome, um, and he shredded. I was like, "What do you do for your eating habits?" And he's like, "I just eat one meal a day." Hmm. And to me, that sounded impossible, <laughs> like completely, completely impossible because I was taught eat a big breakfast, mm-hmm. snack throughout the day, snack in between meals. Um, so that's what I was doing. When I'd wake up, my my stomach was hungry. and I the fast. Yeah. 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 Well, now I break the fast at like noon or one or two o'clock. Like mm-hmm. I don't eat breakfast. But he, he said he eats one meal a day. He said there was some book called The Fast Diet or something like that. I didn't read the book, but he it, just in the conversation, I was like, okay, let me try it. So, and he had like more of a ketogenic diet, but most of it, he's like, I'll eat 2,500 calories in a meal, but I eat one meal a day. So I think it was the next day I was driving to LA for an acting job. And I was like, let me not eat on the way up there. Just skip breakfast. And then before I go in at noon, I'll eat something and then go. So that's how I started. And I remember driving up there. Normally, I would have to stop at like a little burrito shop (laughs) at whatever time, if it was in the morning, get a breakfast burrito and be snacking the whole three hour drive up there. Mm. Uh, (laughs) Jeez. It's just crazy thinking back. Just the new patterns are, they're they're difficult to implement because I wasn't trained to, to live this way. But once you implement them, then it's like, okay, now I'm healthy and I'm free. But it does take that discipline, like you had mentioned. So I, I made it through that day. Well, on the way up there, I remember a couple hours into the drive, my stomach was like, mm. like a dog. It sounded like a dog. Like, <laughs> and I just remember, I was like, hey, buddy, I know we're trying something different. It's going to be okay. Like, I just <laughs> said that out loud to my stomach. And, uh, but I skipped breakfast and then I skipped it another day and I skipped it another day and started like intermittent fasting, learning that process. 
Um, so eating meals in a certain window of time, like 10 to or 12 to 8 p.m., that sort of thing. But even that became too rigid for me because all of a sudden I was like, what time did I start eating today? And what time do I have to stop? And like, mm. like even that was like another mental tr- trap competitive like yeah uh, yeah yeah exactly like i have yeah exactly you, can, by the way, you just want to move the whole tree but yeah so I, I just started eating healthier and healthier foods um learning about like what foods are good for testosterone cruciferous vegetables i eat a lot of vegetables um vegetables are good for testosterone huh well cruciferous um, there's a, there's a, the, there's a whole <laughs> list. I just, and I get a YouTube video, like mm-hmm. some super fit dude who's like eat like mushrooms, like all these, all these different things, red cabbage, like broccoli, vegan, vegan battle, you know? Yeah. Like. And then there's the meat. There's the, yeah. So it all <laughs> unfolds over time. It's it, the, the big things is I, I learned to not eat the sugar, mm-hmm. um, which I love. And I mentioned this before the this cost, like, no, God could have just made uh, sugar healthy. Just make sugar healthy, God, on, and we're good. Coca Cola be spiritual. It, it, it'd be healthy <laughs> and good, and uh, you know we have the fittest country instead of like this, uh, you know, fat obesity thing going on. But uh, you know what? It's marketed. Uh, it's put into our programming to like eat certain ways. I think I, I thought if I went to work out. This was until six years ago. If I worked out without eating beforehand, then it would burn my, it would, I, I thought my body would eat the muscle and, and burn the muscle mm. for energy. I don't know who taught me that, but I learned that somewhere growing up. And now it's like, I'll just get up in the morning, go work out without a meal. Or sometimes I'll have like a little maybe avocado or a little olive oil with some protein powder because I want some protein and good fat, just a mm-hmm. little bit. Um, but I work out a lot without any food in my stomach at all. And and now it's like I'm lean, muscular, strong. And a lot, a lot of these things are kind of counterintuitive. It's like, yeah. it seems like I, I need to eat for nutrition. But then the fasting has these aut- autophagy. Um, I'll do these... So it starts with skipping breakfast. And then I think I dropped to about 11% body fat, body fat in about 10 weeks. Went from 21% body fat to 11%. And, but I was, I was over fasting and not quite eating in the best way to like fuel my body. Yeah, if you break your fast with key lime pie, yeah, like that's it's gonna have a different impact. Than even if you do even it with. carbs, even yeah. carbs, because I grew up loving cereal, mm. loving milk. Um, that was like yeah, my thing. Good. So good, I just crave <laughs> it. Even now, it's like I could eat, I could eat a whole box of cereal just for my cheat meal for the month um, with some organic whole milk or something. <laughs> Sounds so good. Well, I learned substitutions. Mm-hmm. So like now I'll get that craving at night and I'll have oatmeal with raisins, a bunch of cinnamon, maybe some walnuts, maybe blueberries, maybe banana. Uh, just put water in it. Sometimes I'll put a bunch of t- turmeric in it. So I have these healthy substitutes for my old patterns. Um, if I get a sweet tooth, I have some dark chocolate with some organic peanut butter. That's a Reese's peanut butter cup add a blueberry or raisins on top, you win and it's healthy. <laughs> um, so I've, I've learned substitutions. I've learned to eat healthy fats instead of a lot of carbs because that makes my body, whatever I'm eating the most of is what my body will go to for the source of fuel. Mm-hmm. So if I eat more healthy fats when on the times when I don't have the fuel, then I'm basically, my body's like, okay, I'll just eat this. I'm just going to go do, 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 do. And, and so it's a, it's a combination of things. The eating healthy foods, it helps you become more conscious. It helps. It, it totally helps clear the mind. It totally helps. I think it's part of the process of. I remember getting like really understanding the food thing, like kind of figuring it out in terms of just energy for a while, right? Like, yeah. oh man, if I, you know, probably some of the highest energy I've ever had in my life was where I was not really eating breakfast, but I was having a giant steak at like 1130, like steak and eggs, like just steak, eggs, maybe Sounds some so good. vegetables. And then I, I wouldn't really 
uh, my thinking was hyper clear. And this was after sort of a, a rebellious period of time I had where I was dating this girl that was like hyper vegan. Yeah. And I was like, I'll give it a try. I don't care. Like I like food. So if you're going to make delicious cashew cheese or whatever, like, and then, you know, I learned a bit about it. I'm like, Hey, maybe there are some health benefits. Like I'll, I'll experiment. Mm -hmm. So I'd been like hardcore vegan, hadn't touched meat in months. And then, uh, you know, we broke up and I'm like, I love meat. So I went, but I learned about like the carnivore diet, you know, and, yeah. and flipped it and was like, well, Hey, maybe there's, a good thing on the opposite end too. And because there was really no sugar in my diet. I mean, it was black coffee, it was steak, eggs, broccoli, and like some greens essentially. Like that was all, it was very basic. Mm -hmm. um, it was fantastic. And doing that for a period of time, I essentially just got tired of eating the same things over and over. Yeah. Or else I, I think that is probably almost an ideal um, nutrition plan for me. But for, for different people too, I think that's, part of it you know when we talk about programming in terms of the mind you know what about the programming of the body and if someone has been doing something for so long and they're driving to la and their stomach starts talking to them like what is that period of time for different people to get on a good program so there's i think different layers and levels to that challenge too and is yeah. you know I, i'm a huge fan of fasting but is it is it for everybody is it you know, there's so many unknowns. And I think that's where people really have to figure out what works for them to one thing that popped out when you were saying that is the concept of less is more though. Mm -hmm. I think about sitting at dinner, December, 2019, right around there with this really great group of people and we're ordering food. And, uh, one of the things I was programmed was to like eat all the food on your plate. Yeah. And we ordered this <laughs> delicious food and I had a little bit of the appetizer and then I had this great meal come out. But I was in a, a really good place around, you know, was, I think when I first started peeling back even new layers or, or, or pieces of the onion in terms of like truly not caring what people think and doing what my gut told me or what, um, you know, God told me or whatever that, you know, is that internal message is sometimes yeah. it's easy to ignore because of fear of judgment or whatever that might be. And like, we just ordered all this delicious food. It's like super nice restaurant. I'm with this, you know, big shot business owner guy. And it's like big shot business owner lady. And they're obviously going to finish everything on their plates. And I was like, wow, that was really good. And pushed my, my plate. Like I was done. And there's still a good amount of food on there. Mm -hmm. And you could feel the like tension. And then I start, I'm pretty open about stuff. So uh, we actually ended up having a whole conversation about this, about like, yeah, I'm like, I, getting that intuition that like they're like and then it caused them to actually go yeah i don't need to finish my plate either like why yeah why did i feel like i need to finish my plate and uh we i firmly believe we do not need you know maybe unless you're an nfl player or something like that like we don't need as much food as we think right we um must totally back to program want to hear so yep yeah, want to hear the, the family programming of mine for food <laughs> fired up so i'm the third child and then there's a fourth and then there's a fifth and then there's a sixth and then there's a seventh so this big family and my dad was like let's go to the booth i think he said buffet <laughs> buffet yeah nice yeah he he pronounced a certain word we're from Minnesota. Like, ah, that's where I was born. Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. <laughs> so he says buffet or something. <laughs> like he still says it his own way. But he'd take us to this place called Royal Fork in Denver, um, which is like all you can eat buffet. I don't know how much it cost. It didn't cost too much. Um, you know, and it was the sort of thing like, okay, I know you're, I know you're, you know, I know you're 10, but, you know, just say you're eight. You know, that sort of stuff was going <laughs> uh -huh. on. Like, like, hey, you guys, I'm, you know, like he'd get the free meal, even though we're like above whatever age group is the free meal. He's like, you know, gets his way to get us the free meal. Um, <laughs> it's funny. But we were like, you know, it's like, hey, guys, all right, take your time eating. We can stay here as long as we need to just go, eat, you know, so we'd go eat. And then it was almost like we'd be getting coached along the way to eat as much as we can. Like, all right, if you guys need to go to the bathroom, you know, go, go ahead and go to the bathroom, come back, you know, eat up, eat up, eat your fill. And that's what he was conditioned to, like, eat everything, mm -hmm. eat a lot. And so those buffets would be something that were just, like, in our programming to eat a lot 
And when the food's there, like eat your whole plate. And gosh, I would go on the set. And that's that's part of our pay too, you know, like when we're on the set of these projects that have us eat on the set with the production. Um, you know, I remember when I was working some job in San Diego, some acting job, and it wasn't paying that much. But one of the other actor dudes, he's like, yeah, man, this is part of your pay, dude. You know, he's like, eat up, you know, and he would, he had a Tupperware container <laughs> that he was going to take like uh, uh, extra food home with yeah. him because they have like full, like huge spreads. Um, like the, almost like the way people, like maybe if you've went to a convention or went to a hotel or something and ate at a buffet at a wedding or something, it's like that kind of spreads a lot of time. So he had a Tupperware container and he was like just making sure he took extra to have for his ride home. So so that helped program me into going on the set. And I'm like, I'm going to eat here. I'm going to have extra for the ride home. I'm going to have a to-go plate. You know, <laughs> like at, on the set, it would be like there's regular plates and then to-go plates for people who might have to grab food and just, you know, go work. I'm like, I'm just going to put it in a to-go plate while I eat because I'm taking some with me, I know. So I was conditioned to eat a lot of food until the last couple of years, really. And that's when my body fat went down and now I'm leaner and more in a homeostasis. And that probably the fasting, intermittent fasting, get, staying away from the sugars, that probably had helped me open my mind up and receive the books. I have a feeling something in me wonders, it's like, was the message of these books being, uh, was it always there? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure it was always there. Just had to get out some of that pollution. Yeah. As you talked about earlier. Yeah. So but there's a, a couple couple things I definitely want to ask you about. Um, I mean, some of the stuff we were talking about, like Jedi pendants and, you know, photons and people named Arctur. What was it, guys? That was such a cool Arcturus name. Arcturus Ra. Yeah, there's, you know. You used to look him up on YouTube and I'm Instagram. Gonna, I'm still finding this guy the, later. The dude's super <laughs> interesting and he's into like some cool technology stuff. Well, um, another word that I've been tracking in the Bible is this word manna. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I don't know about you. All I had was coffee today, but we're talking about some pretty far out there stuff for some people right there. Like, boy, these guys like, live on another planet. And also knowing Sedona and the uh, community in terms of, of general, this is not just I'm not picking on Sedona by any means, but it's just like there's a, a culture of folks that will tap into a certain type of thinking or being, you know, and utilizing um, things like plant medicine, like mm -hmm. psilocybin or um, other, you know, cannabis, whatever it is. Uh, are you, how do you, I guess, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about... Which one's psilocybin? Psilocybin is, is the, mushrooms? It's the compound that's in uh, magic mushrooms that okay. can make it a, a magical day. Magic first. <laughs> yeah, what do you call it? I mean, mushrooms. <laughs> that's a better way to put it. Because yeah. you don't want to, yeah. I probably wouldn't put a whole lot of them on my salad on a regular basis. I'd be living in a different world. But right. <laughs> yeah. I was just talking about those with my brother on the way over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just had some funny joke. Like, what if, what if our dad had them, you know? And uh, yeah. then my brother's great at imitating people and my dad. So he's like, oh. yeah, yeah, he just had some way of like, imitating my dad going through <laughs> being on magic mushrooms and, uh -huh. you know but uh, hugging trees how do i feel plants. about those um probably the, just there's a balance with a lot of that stuff i know weed weed for me it, it feels like it clogs my mind other people there's other people that i know that are super highly functioning like amazingly like high level producers in business, fitness, like all, all those areas of their life. And somehow we clears their mind and helps them think clear. So you got to find the right thing for yourself. Um, mushrooms are, I did have an interesting mushroom experience in Sedona. <laughs> Here we go. You ready for this one? <laughs> This is when you saw the UFO? Uh, the, oh, the, I'm glad you remember the seeing the UFO because I'll tell you about that one too. Um, that Yeah, so this was before, maybe a couple weeks before. Um, so I met these 
gosh, there's so many great people I've met out there that are like soul friends, like, like dozens of like, I know this dude for lifetimes types of people. So, all right. So I met this dude named Reed. He's great. And uh, somehow or another, I go to some gathering with some group, you know, it's kind of spiritual group of people. And I don't know how the topic came up, but he gives me some mushrooms. Because I think I had told him I got some, I was on a hike a few weeks earlier and I got some from some people on a hike because I felt like maybe I should do some, you know, there's, there's certain people like Aubrey Marcus and, you know, some other mm. people who, you know, they'll talk about ayahuasca and some other things, plant, med plant medicines. It's like, maybe I should do some, not as much recreational, but more like experience, like th not to go have like a yay day, like I used to think of with those things, mm -hmm. but more like, let me go out in nature and experience something. So I, I took a few of those mushrooms from those people and I just, I just felt a little off, colors were a little amplified, but um, this buddy, he's, I think he's a shamanic like medicine. I might be using the terms wrong, but he like guides people into plant medicines. So he's like, gives me some. And he says, okay, remember to just say something before you do them. Like only those of love, light, and the divine plan shall be in my presence mm. while I'm doing this. I was like, okay, cool. So in the next couple of days, I go on some hike at Bell Rock and Courthouse Butte, which is one of the energy vortex mountain ranges, mountains there. Have you been to Sedona? Oh, I've done awesome. a lot of, I've heard about the energy vortexes. So, they're, they're real. Yeah. It's like an ampli amplified energy in nature. So I take them and just start walking around one of the mountains. And I forget to, you know, put up the energetic boundary though mm. <laughs> before getting into this thing. So I'm walking around one of the mountains and around the backside and it's a couple hours before sunset. And I'm like, I should be able to get back in time and I have lights, but, uh, and it gets to be more colorful and vibrant. I remember looking up at the mountain and it was almost like a flowing red rock energy. I could see it moving and something in me was like, Oh, I can move anything with my consciousness. Like anything, like I just had, to, th this was the positive part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Like all of this reality, all, even this mountain is moldable with my consciousness. I can mold anything out of life with my imagination, awareness, those things. So that was the good part. And then it got into like, went from like fairy tale, you know, it's, it's nice, beautiful forest and colors and all this stuff. And then the sun starts going down a little bit. And then it turned into like kind of weird Alice in Wonderland stuff like, oh, how am I going to get? And I started getting a little nauseous and not feeling good. And then the world's, yeah, all this, like, I, I was like, just to get back to my car was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I got back to my car and I didn't, I felt like, didn't feel good at all. Mm. And I'm in the car and it's dark. And that's when it felt like I was going through spiritual warfare. Mm. For real. And this is, it's one of those experiences. It wasn't like a human experience, you know, like, oh, I'm talking to you. But it was really real. And somehow it, it mattered in my life and the collective life. Um, but I felt the fear and the worry and the anxiety of the whole earth, of the people on earth going through all this like pandemic stuff being oppressed, being locked down, being like, I felt all that as well as I felt every time that I didn't speak up, every time that I didn't say my truth, every time that I let someone kind of walk all over me, every time that, uh, like I, I didn't, every time I kind of like took it instead of like being like, no, um, those little like hesitation, like, you know, you should say something, but you don't. It's like, you know, your energy should go and not like a reactive thing, more like a holding your ground thing. Like, like you're I'm trying to put it into words, but um, I think it's like true love is freedom. Like by not saying the thing or, or even saying the joke, like you have a joke and you don't say it. It's like, ah, ah. Uh, 
It's like a little block you put in your heart. Mm. It's like a little, or, and like a little drip of poison that's like goes in in you, just a little bit, like con- condense you, condense you, condense you. I felt like my whole life, I just had like all these like oh, I should have this and this relationship and this girlfriend and this thing with my parents and like all this stuff's going through me, and I felt like really like demons, some energy on earth that's really messing with people a lot last year being like going after me and i was like um god jesus angels help me through this and i sat in my car you know like nauseous sick felt like i needed to throw up and i felt like i needed to just cleanse myself and i got through it got home and then the next couple days uh it's like i slept a lot and I thought I should just be back to normal, but I felt like queasy in my stomach for a couple of days. And then I went to that Creekside Cafe and I tried to get in touch with my buddy that uh, gave him to me to talk through it with me. Like, dude, let me talk to you about this. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't reach him. He didn't get back to me for like a week. But I went to Creekside Cafe and I these two little angel, uh, this girl Ashley and this girl Emily, little angel uh, like healers, but one's an actress. Um, I met them out there. They're like, yeah, we learned, we're learning some stuff from the emotion code, this practice, like this practice of how to heal people. Can we practice it on you? And I'm like, sure. Not thinking that I needed stuff like whatever came up to be like purged out of me. Cause that's mm-hmm. really what happened. Um, and they go through some process of like, one of them has her hand on my arm and she's like, okay. Uh, his heart the back of his heart, like, like diagnosing my system. And the other girl is like looking up, looking up these charts and stuff. And she's like, okay, let me heal this. You know, and she has like, like little, little crystals or a few um, different stones that she's using. And she's like, okay, energetically healing me for all this stuff. And she's identifying stuff. She's like, did something happen when you're eight years old, around eight years old? And I was like, yeah, well, I did get, uh, I got uh, glasses when I was that, when I was eight. So kids made fun of me and stuff. She's like, okay. So she scanned my body like for probably like 20 minutes. And she, and there are issues with my mom, issues with old girlfriends, issues with all this stuff in my system. And I felt like it was clearing me. And then they're like, okay, I think we're done. And I was like, you know, I've been feeling like my stomach. I got some, some, like I've been nauseous since I did those mushrooms and so the, the, she scans it and she's like, I sense you have some attachments to your spleen, like energetic. Mm-hmm. And it said like a hundred, hundred or 120. She said some number, like she got a bunch of things that attached to you. And from what I went through with the mushrooms, I'm like, yeah, I didn't put up my barrier. man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put up. Here we go. Sweet. Cool, so buddy. Well, yeah. Cause with, with mushrooms, you know, uh, I think it's a fair statement to say that anybody who believes in God, you know, let's say you are Catholic or Christian, you also have a conversation about Satan or the devil. And there's different belief systems that mushrooms are a product of the devil, it's a drug, it's evil. Um, and then there are other people believe that it's actually described in the Bible in some places as manna, as mm-hmm. a gift from God to help unlock a new level of thinking or to reset a system. Sounds like that was more your experience. Yeah. I didn't know that about manna, like manna from heaven, <laughs> mushrooms going. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm people just eating mushrooms all day. Uh, <laughs> no wonder it took them 40 years you know or whatever they were in the desert for like an hour but it felt like 40 yeah. years like yeah <laughs> <laughs> who knows maybe maybe <laughs> uh it's a funny way to look at it but yeah <laughs> all right cool <laughs> well that, and that's what i'm when I'm, I'm going back through reading the old testament and i'm i'm really happy like i have spent time in church mm-hmm. and when you when you're in that setting, 
one of my favorite people on the planet, because we talked a lot about religion over the last several years. And, um, you know, I, I, I pray, I read the Bible, I, I do a lot of these things. I find them to be super powerful in terms of practicing good habits, connecting with God, um, connecting with the higher self. There's a lot of different ways to put it. I'm still working on my own understanding of it. I it used to be, I didn't believe in anything. And, uh, you know, or the, well, there's a, another belief that like God is either dead or not paying attention anymore. Cause life was pretty tough. And I was like, Hey, mm-hmm. there's no, but there's no way like some omnipotent being is, is, you know, uh, not, not happening right now. Yeah. Like, not a cool guy, in my opinion. Yeah. That drastically changed over time. And especially when I look back and I see all the opportunities to receive gifts and, um, you know, from God or, or to make me stronger in some way. So it's really altered my my thinking on it. But, uh, he, you know, this guy that I really admire, he, one time we were talking about it, he said, I go to church not because I believe everything a pastor tells me. Um, not even, you know, maybe not everything he reads. Mm-hmm. He said, but when I practice these habits and we talk about these things, it makes me more of it. And I am a better um, father because of, because of it, a better husband because of it, a better leader, a better leader in business, mm-hmm. um, all of these things. And so one of my, one of the things I'm having a lot of fun with is going through the Bible and learning from it, but also taking the time to look up the true definition of a word or see a word in the Bible that, uh, like the matrix, and be like, wow, they said the matrix like seven times in this chapter, you know, or yeah. whatever it is. And it, but then go and see, was this something that a human changed 500 years ago when revising the Bible? Yeah. What word was actually used 2,500 years ago, you know, in the original context or 3,000 or whenever it was? And like, like anything, things can get lost over time when you have a, a group of people that have an agenda, a message can be shifted to fit that agenda. And I'm not, I'm not pointing to a church and saying that's what they're doing, but we put our own, we put it through our lens when we share a message with other people. Yeah. And so what is the true, you know, message of the word? The manna one's really fascinating because there are whole like um, theologians that, you know, theologians that have dedicated their lives to researching what manna means, mm-hmm. what, if any, impact mushrooms played in um, spiritual evolution of, of humans. Mm-hmm. So that, that's a whole different fact. I'm seeing over there like fingerprints of the gods by Graham Hancock. That guy's yeah. super controversial around all of that. Um, how do you, you know, w- when you when you come across somebody that's seen the work that you're doing, or maybe this hasn't happened yet, but in terms of writing a book that has been, that you've received, you know, through, as you put Jesus, the Christ, I like what you say that, um, that is very, you know, it's all about love. It's about, um, this creation is heaven on earth. And also, you know, part of your experience has been consuming uh, you know, mushrooms, like how do you have that conversation with someone who is really in a frame of thinking of that being a an evil thing or a satanic thing or not God's will? Um, the books or the mushrooms? The mushroom part, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because I could, I could see how they could say that's well, a conflict of interest. They, who knows? Everyone's going to have their perception. I'm just sharing an experience that I had not necessarily you know to me it purged something out of me Mm -hmm. you know but it also let me know like what can happen like that experience i was like how have people been using these recreationally (laughs) and not been polluted or have some you know attachments to them or um some sort of spiritual, uh, I just say attachments, energetic cords. I just, I know that that helped purge cords. Like we can have energy connections to other people, other people that we're related to, other people in our life, people from the past, old girlfriends, you know, relationships, all sorts of stuff can still be attached to us that isn't serving us. One of my buddies in Vegas had a different buddy, uh, 
had some stuff with the, uh, his mom that had already passed away that he realized that she was still like attached to him that was blocking like his love life and certain aspects of his better life happening. And he went to some healer out there and she was just aware of these things going on in him and she helped heal him energetically. Um, who knows? Uh, like, you're like, what do you say to this? someone? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like, <laughs> it's like, I just, I'm like, read the book, just read the book <laughs> and then talk to me because the book <laughs> is self explanatory. Um, and then uh, if you're like wondering, hey, d- did Dan come up with this or is he getting a message from Jesus or um, what, what is it? You know, everyone can have, you know how it is. It's like, of, a, of a, any event or situation, there can be an infinite number of perceptions of that event or situation. So, um, what is the per, people? What are people going to think? Well, I, I'll just say this: you either are going to say that books by Jesus is amazing, or you're going to be like, Dan is an amazing writer and he's like a one take wonder. And I watched his video of him getting a message download and he can say a whole hour long segment of a book and have it be just about precise. When I transcribe it from, you know, audio or film and I type it, get it typed in written form and start editing it. I'm like, this thing's pretty close to perfect. I have to, massage a few things or the way that I get the words that drop in my mind, but it's, it's pretty amazing. So they, or maybe they'll have even some other perception of the situation, but the book's all about love. And the way that it has helped me in my life is to look at something like love in so many different ways and understand it more like, deeper within me than something that and this is for the book of love all the books have love and light and heaven within them but the book of love is love focused um just to realize that love isn't some fleeting thing love isn't something that i can perceive it as oh i am in love i have a girlfriend we love each other my parents, you know, my mom, we love each other. Me and my dad love each other. You know, I love doing this. I love these things. Like, I love w- being in a relationship and feeling like, oh, you're in love for an extended period of time. Those are, that's fine. But at the core of ourselves, we are love all the time. So I'm reconditioning my humanness to align with my divinity, which is, and I'm still going through this process (laughs) because whatever programming that I've received that has taught me other than that, like be mad about this, frustrated when this, when things don't quite happen in the way that you want them to, when things don't work out quite right, like those types of things, I'll get frustrated and mad and sometimes still get mad about some things, but I come back to, oh, it's really all just love. It's really all just love. I am love. All aspects of me are love. Love is the greatest force in, in, it's just, it is, you know? So, um, hopefully that kind of answers your question, kind of. Yeah. And that was a good, why do you think for you, you know, instead of it being Buddha or, uh, you know, any of these other, uh, what's a good word for it? Guides, yeah. I guess, because that's a, a safe word, you know, in terms of the different folks that have their own, their own guides. Why was it Jesus for you? See, I've, I've wondered that, you know, looking back, piecing it together. And I'm like, I've thought about it. I was like, well, did I want these books? And I want, I think I wanted them because for years I was like, you know, in the Bible, we got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They wrote the books about Jesus. 
But what was Jesus's take on the situation? Hmm. So it's like, Jesus goes in and heals someone and has third party, almost like, I'm I'm just explaining it like this, but like a reporter looking at it. (laughs) And the the person's like, oh, you know, the person with leprosy came to Jesus and Jesus healed them. And I've wondered, I was like, what would Jesus say? If he's given the, what would he just tell us? And I, and I, I know, I, I don't know if I prayed about it, like I want this, but I've wondered that, like, I'd like to hear directly from Jesus. I've thought that for a long time. And then, uh, I've also wondered about like, if it needed to happen that way. So, cause just in the way that I, Jesus, you know, like I'm, I'm paraphrasing because, you know, I've read the New Testament several times, but I'm not like a biblical scholar. Like I remember every part, but it's like Jesus raising someone from the dead and he's like, she's sleeping, you know? I'm like, did Jesus even see the sick person? Or he's like, you are well. And Matthew's over here going like, that person's (laughs) sick, from Matthew's, you know, pers- mm. perspective, he's like, that's a sick person, and Jesus healed him. And Jesus might have seen only perfection. He's like, and new well-being. And maybe the person that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John saw as sick, Jesus is like, your faith has made you well. Because he saw their perfection. And he knew God's glory and God's beauty and well-being in them. So maybe, like, his knowing of that was just like, who knows how he actually saw the situation from Jesus's eyes in the situation. Maybe it needed the third party to tell the story. I've just, you know, we can wonder things about why things happen a certain way. You're making me think of the heaven on earth thing. Like he fully embodied what the, or, you know, what Genesis teaches people in terms of ancient wisdom Mm -hmm. that, you know, God spoke the world into existence. Like you speak your own world, whether it's the matrix Mm -hmm. or the Bible or the matrix and the Bible or Mm -hmm. heaven on earth. And it sounds like, you know, as you're saying that he literally was like, here's what I believe and his belief and understanding and the gift that I believe we are given as, uh, humans, whatever that means. It's a pretty complex word. Yeah. But, uh, grants us, is it, is it blasphemy or, or, or wrong to say grants us the power of a Jesus in terms of healing ourselves and, you know, creating the world we live in? Is that, you know, more power than a human is, is gifted or is that a a possibility? See, there's something about the, gosh, there's so many, it's like, there's all these layers of experience that happen over time. Cause maybe it was when I, maybe in the last five or six, seven years, something like that. Um, so I am the words I am, mm. that's the name of God. It, I am that I am. Mm. So, like in the Bible, I don't remember who it was. Was it Abraham or Noah or Moses? Maybe it's like, "What shall I call you?" He said, "I am that I am." So, I am is the mighty God presence. Is the name of God is I am. Do you know? Do you? Do you no, I know like Yahweh and like all these other sort of names, like Jehovah, that pop up, but I have yeah. not gotten to the part where he's like, "I am, I am," and that's. Even you saying that, like I have an I am document that I read to myself in the morning. So, yeah. So, well, see, this is the way that I have un- unfolded my perception of what I am means. Mm. I am is the name of God. Uh, I know it's in the Bible that I think it's to Mo- Moses or Noah, or one of those guys. But they're like, what should I call you? And he says, I am. Or I am that I am. Something like that. It's in there. So, I am means God within so i am is the name of god i am means god within so this is my perception of it but when jesus is saying i am the light of the world and the people listening won't be able to see this but it's like i am personal that's what we think is i am 
happy. I am joyful. That's we're, we just mm. think it's some personal way that we describe ourselves. Personal. But I think Jesus was saying, I am the light of the world. God within when I when he says and you're pointing at me now. Right. So meaning I am the light of the world in me, in you, and in everything is I am God within is the light of the world. So it's like instead of if I said I am the light of the world first person or third person. Mm. So was he saying it first person or was he saying it God. third person? God, I am the light of the world. God in me, God in you, God in all simultaneously. And I'm getting chills because this is probably <laughs> it. <laughs> so that's the way I perceive it. took me a while to unfold this. So I would play around with um, some of Jesus's terms that he would say, I am the light of the world. I'd just be driving to some acting job and just saying affirmations like, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. I was like, was he saying that those things like just for him or was he saying God within is the resurrection and the life for everyone? And I would say these things and a little part of me is like, is it okay to even say the words that Jesus mm -hmm. said? Mm -hmm. And uh, see, I'm getting the drills. Too. Yeah, okay. Smart. It's happening a couple of, it's yeah. probably like half dozen yeah. times. It's like the, every time we go on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it okay for me to say the same words that Jesus said, the ones that were in the Bible, those I am types of statements. And I felt a little funny about it, but I would say them and still feel a little, these days I don't feel funny about it at all, but it took me a while to work through that. But it's like, I am is God within. So I am the light of the world, meaning I am personally, Jesus personally, and I, I just know, this is one of my knowings. Jesus was saying, I am the light of the world. It, everyone simultaneously is the light of the world. So it's more of a direct um, message within the book of love, light in heaven, where Jesus will say, you are the light of the world as I am the light of the world. And there's a bunch of I am statements throughout those books, like many decrees and declarations, uh, divine decrees, which are like affirmations to use for love, light, uh, heaven on earth, creating heaven on earth, using your voice, even let there be light in the book of heaven or a book of light. There's God said, let there be light, spoke light into existence. And there was infinite light everywhere. And then there's like, let there be light in all of my actions. Let there be light in all societies on earth. Let there be light be between the leaders of every nation. Let there be light in all public offices. Like the book goes through all sorts of ways to put light from the core of our beings through all aspects of our life and society around us. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's, that's been something, that's just, that's the way I have perceived those I am statements. And when someone says, oh, I am not, you know, oh, I'm sick. That's, that's like. You're almost cursing yourself. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and that's like saying God within me is sick. No, God within you is fine. But you're, you're personalizing like when, when you think of I am health or wealth or well-being or great goodness or glory or beauty. Those are the divine truths. This is where people think we probably took some mana before we started the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but just high vibe and this this just, is where i'm at in life thinking about this yeah. stuff man this yeah. is uh it's it's super powerful i i am in the in the mm -hmm. last year i watched some of my personal word choice shift yeah good. based on well backwards oh, okay <laughs> from a place of operation where uh is super on point and then, you know, much like you talked about not putting your guards up, going into the the vortexes of energies coming at you. And, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it was a interesting thing, like shifting some goals or like, okay, like, why not get married? You know, like, this is a great person, whatever. Th this kind of like inviting people, those attachments, those cords mm -hmm. and the influence they have uh, on you, if you allow it can be strong and so it took some like uh, uh stringing through it and paying closer attention to my words because it 
it allowed this kind of looseness mm. in a sense. And it, I am a firm believer that we we speak our realities. You know, you and you have to be very careful about two two forms of, of speaking in terms of the past, present, future, too. You can get sucked into the past if you're you can share it in a way that, and I've talked about this before actually on the podcast. Uh you can live in the past, which is kind of a, a low, kind of sucks you down if you're mm-hmm. like stuck in this replay mode. You can reflect on the past and and use that to share, to to learn from personally, to help others in a good way. Um, and you can also, and there was actually part of this in Numbers and Moses or one of the books of the Old Testament where I was like, oh, that's what I've been saying for a while about you can't predict the future. You I think there's a some kind of energetic law or principle that says we can we can do things like say we're working on something, we're working towards it, we can believe it. But the that little saying like don't count your chickens before they hatch. It's almost like when I see people do that, the the thing that they're speaking into existence, like that's that's outside of our our realm of power when it comes to speaking. And so you you have to be very careful with that. Like I'll use sales as an example, like business sales or, or the uh like this is for sure going to happen. And then anytime I see someone say that, it's almost like it usually doesn't happen. Like almost like violating this energetic law of words. Could be. <laughs> also, who knows what's going on in there mind or in our mind as we are declaring wonderful glorious things Mm -hmm. and then our mind starts drifting into the past or into Mm. oh the new story of today and we talk about that for 15 minutes and then we mix that all in with this is definitely something beautiful gonna happen yeah so so that's what that's what where is that statement coming from is it yeah. coming from a source of love and power and strength? Or is it coming from a source of like need and fear and be wary of the shark? Oh, that, yeah, <laughs> that true too. Yeah. Huh. You know, cause who knows if they're, yeah. If someone's like, yeah, this is definitely going to happen. And they think their thoughts and they're focused on that and that's it. But then if in them, there's a little bit of, ah, oh, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm, ah, maybe, ah, man. I don't know. And then maybe they hear some doubt. They, you know, read something that's like, you know, get some naysayers, say some stuff stirring in their head, you know, and then it doesn't happen. How do you but interact? Maybe, oh, go ahead. I'm still, and I'm still working on, you know, <laughs> there's, there's lots of things that I want to have happen that I speak and declare over my life that still, that haven't yet happened in my physical world. But um, some of the things like... Is it in private or is it like in public, like a guarantee type thing? Mm. Oh, just just something like uh, the next car I want to get, you know, some, yeah. something like that. Um, so um, I know it will happen. It's like, seems like it should have happened by now. <laughs> seems like it should happen by now, God. But, uh, <laughs> you know, some of those types of things. Mm-hmm. And who knows, like, how many, there's so many thoughts that happen in a day, you know? Mm. I, there is something, I just know this is true. If we only thought positive thoughts, we would think so many positive thoughts and it's like, have so many flowers or good things happening in our life. We really would only experience those things. If we could be in like a meditative state where you're kind of just observing life and just, okay, I'm in this reality, great. And you're enjoying it. And then you close your eyes and imagine something wonderful happening. And then that starts happening and you just you start and you're imagining and enjoying life and imagining and experiencing, imagining, experiencing, and you're doing that. That's different than the way I know me personally, I'm not quite there. I'm imagining and then, you know, my mind might drift into something from the past or in the future, you know, like drift into different things that aren't like just the straight beeline to like, oh, here's your new situation or better thing, you know. Yeah, I believe I have over time trained my mind. I don't, I think I talk a lot about the difference between being positive and being optimistic. 
Because uh, positive can sound kind of flowery, you get cut up certain times, but op- optimism being confident about the future. Yeah. And so, like, I think of, uh, I tore my ACL in October, and I was not excited about it. You know, put a, a kink in some plans. Yeah. But I over time, because it's not the first time something, either an injury or a car accident, like, it's not the first event in my life that has ever thrown me off. But one thing I worked really hard on throughout my 20s and early 30s was taking an event, not saying it's good or bad, being that neutral maybe state, and then figuring out what benefit I could have extract out of it. Okay, I tore my ACL. Well, it's going to halt my my personal goal of desiring a, a blue belt in 10th planet jiu-jitsu. Like, I'm not going to jiu-jitsu anytime soon. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some benefits? Well, uh, now I can do X, Y, Z. Well, I actually have a little bit more time to work on maybe a book or... You know, there's some there's some gift in there. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not driving as much, you know. Now I can walk over here, experience nature. And there are different um, events that are more tragic than tearing an ACL that may be more difficult. But whether it's um, losing a loved one, like I watched my grandma get Alzheimer's and not know anybody around. And I watched how my different family members experienced it when, you know, she would call them like, a different name and they would take it very, some of them would take it very personal, kind of like get anxious or stressed. And she would call me whatever and ask me about my seven kids that I don't have. And I'm like, what are their names again? You know, and like play yeah. around with that, have a little fun. Cause I couldn't change it. Yeah. So what's the benefit? Let's have fun with it. You know, let's try to bring some joy to this. Obviously very, didn't mean I wasn't sad about it, but I wasn't going to give that my attention. So I think, I do think we can train some people maybe have it more, maybe it's like a genetic thing for some people in a sense too, but I, I honestly have seen myself just train my thinking over time yeah. to do stuff like that. Yeah, I'm training, I train my thinking for sure. Affirmations and different concepts. I know right when I wake up now, it's, I just start, <laughs> I am heaven on earth. I am heaven now. And I'll just like, within a few minutes, I'll make myself start singing it. I am heaven on earth. I am heaven on earth. I just, I start singing it, you know, and when I'm in sleep state, it takes me several minutes to like get my full body (laughs) state going. Like Mm -hmm. that helps me, you know, it's like, okay, what's the best thought I can think? I am heaven right now. And I'll go to sleep, tell myself I'm, I I am heaven now. I'm going to sleep in heaven. I'm going to wake up in heaven and it's going to be a, great day tomorrow in heaven right here on earth and it's going to be beautiful and wonderful and it just is more and more amazing every day every time i go out to the beach it gets becomes more colorful and energetic and i notice birds flying and birds chirping and the stuff that i missed before i notice and i know every moment is amazing and beautiful and every single moment is a masterpiece And really me choosing those perceptions of every single moment. That's the biggest thing. Man, we're picking up some deep sounds. I don't know if you heard that. (laughs) Do you hear that or no? All right, good. Okay. (laughs) It is choosing that moment, what you're talking about. Because, and this is sort of how we started off in a sense too. I can walk down the street with somebody and if if their brain is stuck or they've been spending most of their time thinking about the the terrors of the planet Mm -hmm. and i'm like check out these birds what birds right you know so it is how do you feel the so along those lines what happens when someone notices the birds and notices the flowers and then notices them again and then wakes up in the morning and walks outside and notices and feels the cool air on their face it's like oh and they're like my body actually can register the cool sensation and it feels good. Like, oh, I'm grateful that for my body. And then you start moving your body and you're like, every move I make and every breath I take is beauty and glory and love and light and heaven. And everywhere I go and everything I do. And you focus so much on that concept. And you're like, I haven't watched the news in two years and mm-hmm. I didn't miss a thing. Mm-hmm. And I went from, and I thought about this the other day. Uh, in the last few days, it's like, okay, if someone lives in this state 
and has, you know, they're like, oh, my governor is, they don't like their governor. They go to another state and they visit it. You know, you go to Cal from California, go to Arizona, maybe go to Denver, maybe you go to Utah and come back home. I live, did in, you, te did I live you, in Texas now. <laughs> yeah. Did you know, like you didn't, you had this thing with your politician in your state or in your nation, but then you traveled to another state or another nation and you just went through the world. Did you check in and make sure their governor or their president was someone you agreed with? Or did you just go live your life? Hmm. And I was like, I just went from California to Arizona to whatever I've done. We can have all these, like, think, like, oh, I live in this state and the governor or the president or whatever's doing all this stuff. What if you just went and lived your life and realized that you were fine and that it was okay? And you focused so much on beauty and love and glory and magnificence that you surrounded yourself with all those people and you met smiley, happy, friendly faces everywhere you go and you make new best friends and you, you start experiencing life as synchronistic and then you realize that life just is synchronistic. It's not some special occasion that you just, oh, I had a bunch of cool coincidences or synchronicities today. Uh, life is synchronicity. It's constantly flowing and self-organizing for you to live something beautiful and glorious. You just let go of all the stuff that chaos, trauma, drama of, the, of your life or the world you just let go of it over time. And then you let yourself live in the perfect, beautiful present moment. And you keep doing that so much and it rewires your emotional pattern, your mental pattern, reorganizes your, your, your home, your life. And, and eventually you're like, man, I, I'm living in a, a new society that there's just wonderful people around. Well, because you you did the work to change your perspective, perspectives and perceptions and to so, focus so much on something wonderful, like planted so many flowers in the garden of your life in your mind and your focus on that, that the weeds just drifted away and you're like, you're living in something, you're living in that original plan, the Garden of Eden, literally heaven on earth. And that. I know it's there. Just like just like you can move to a different physical state, mm -hmm. like literally state boundary. If you were to take what you were talking about, like going to Arizona, Utah, Wyoming, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and I was thought those are all very conservative states, I think. <laughs> we might be biased in terms of what freedom means to us right now after being in California. But yeah, yeah. you can move your mental, you know, emotional... Um, states as well into these other states. It doesn't yeah. mean there's not, you know, tornadoes or hurricanes that happen in those states right. or whatever earthquakes, you know, but if you are, if it's a happier environment for you, if it's the environment that you're more joyous about um, mentally, you know, and emotionally, mm -hmm. you can choose to live in that state. But just like if you were to move your house to another physical state, there's a lot of work that comes with that, depending on how much junk you have in your garage yeah. or, you know, how deep you are on a mortgage or cost of living. So it's all relative. You can live in a different state. There's work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And it is a, it's a choice like anything else. And sometimes you have to let go of some stuff. Let go of sometimes a lot That's of things. Sometimes it's part. people. Yeah. Sometimes it's a job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, you know, it's whatever, but, but it's, it's there for it. Mm -hmm. How do you think about, so if you were in America and Jesus is pretty big deal here, uh, but not the case on all continents, mm -hmm. different languages, different histories. Um, what kind of opportunity? I mean, like I'll give you an example. I, I believe that, you know, this even goes back to one of our original conversations. We're trained a lot to think of differences. And we can train ourselves to find similarities. And I was uh, very fortunate to have a really cool community college teacher that just like went to town in this like advanced critical thinking class mm -hmm. of giving us these super complex readings. In fact, I see a book right there, Ways of Reading. Uh, like these 
highly intellectual things that were way outside of my realm of understanding, teaching us how to break it down and then find, like create similarities through this very contrast writing. Like one was writing by Heinrich Himmler, like this massive Nazi. And then a, a writing by this philosopher from once upon a time, like Michael McKinnon, like Panop, all this crazy stuff. And he was like, all right, so, you know, compare, contrast, and then figure out how they're the same. And you're just like, what? These are like nowhere near similar. But it, I do think that was one of those things that started to retrain my brain around yeah, finding good. similarities. So when I look at the Bible or I talk to somebody that is, you know, Buddhist or, or Islamic or found these different faith systems, I find a lot of similarities. But we, we try to do that middle school thing where we go my middle school versus your middle yeah. school. How do you feel that your message can resonate with folks that are of a different maybe faith or belief system? Uh, I feel like it's a message for everybody. And the core teachings of Jesus were to love, to be love, to express love, to show love in all circumstances. Um, and who knows the the part of religion? Because I'm I'm Christian, but I'm not very religious. <laughs> because even within Christianity, it's like I grew up Lutheran. My grandfather was mm -hmm. Lutheran minister in Minnesota, so I learned the, from this guy Martin Luther wrote this whole way that he perceived the Bible, and he broke away from the Catholic Church. So I was taught as Lutheran that Catholics kind of had these principles and things that they did that were, yeah, they're kind of messed up. So we had to break away. Hmm. So Lutherans were different than Catholics. Um, and if you're Jewish, you're definitely not like, which is kind of like, you know, it's like, I believe in Jesus or I, you know, I'm Christian, believe in Jesus and you don't, you're Jewish. I'm going to heaven, you're going to hell. You know, it's like, what? <laughs> you know, like, what? Yeah, so, well, but that's what I was taught. And then within Christianity, it's like, Baptists and Protestants don't like each other. Like, all this stuff. And it's like, it's like a separation within what should be a collective, like, oh, we're definitely, we're, we're definitely all Denver Bronco fans, you know? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, well, I like, you know, I'm a Denver Bronco fan, but I prefer, you know, I like the quarterback better and someone else likes the defensive line better. So we're a different fans. It's like, dude, I think we're all like part of the same group. So just those separations within what should be a great, beautiful message from Jesus. Um, it's just interesting how the, all these divisions get programmed in us. Um, but I've let go of that type of thinking, you know, just because someone of another faith or religion or any of those things. I don't know exactly what you've been taught and what you believe, what your culture raised you to think about or know. Um, if I would have been raised in a, and I know one of the books, I think it's the book of light talks about this. If you would have been raised in a different environment, what, where you were born, if you would have been raised in a different culture on a different side of the planet, you might not even recognize yourself because mm. you'd be wearing different clothes, a different hairstyle. You'd have different habits, behaviors, different ways that you interacted with each other, different ways people did business, different, just based on where you were born, like location. So to have like an understanding that, I'll just say different people in different parts of the world, we're all believe in different stuff um, based on the world that we grew up in. A message about like love and unconditional love transcends all, transcends human programming, you know, the way that I've been programmed and conditioned to think. Um, and I've gotten rid of a lot of this, but it's still, there's still more, you know, the sep separation, division, us versus them, all these different things, competition versus harm harmonious cooperation. 
Um, so it's just, it's a message about love. I just say people to, to read the book and feel how you feel, how you feel while you read the book. Cause these books, they really don't have, they don't have drama. They don't have, uh, even storylines that go into, you know, bad situations and then come out with something good at the end. Um, which the Bible has lots of those stories in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, this is me personally. I'm like, I don't want dramatic anything. I'll, <laughs> I'll take an interesting day. I'll take a fun day. I'll take like, oh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but dramatic, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out like dramatic TV. Like I'm an actor, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't even want to go down those roads, you know, vibrationally to make projects that have this dense energy to them to tell a story. I'm just like, what if we focus so much on love, so much on God's light, so much on beauty and glory and perfection and magnificence that that's what we experience and do that over and over and over and anchor yourself into the present moment, which is all those things. It's all there. It always has. And the things that I'm saying is all there. I'm aware that it's there. It has been there my whole life. But I missed it because of the social programming and because of the limitations that I was taught and because the negative emotional patterns that I took on from my environment. You know, it's always been there. The glory of life, the beauty of life has always been in the present moment. It's always been there. And to live it and be it, feel, live it, feel it, be it, and have your physical senses filter life that way. That's the best part. That's what I've been doing the last few months is reconditioning my physical senses. So I say, I am beauty seeing beauty. I am God's glory seeing God's glory. And I'll do it with seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smell. And I am heaven experiencing heaven. I am heaven hearing heaven, touching heaven. Every move I make, every breath I take is love, light, and heaven. I think it's a song. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah. Every breath. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, oh, so reconditioning my physical senses to align with my divinity and, uh, and to work the way that they could have worked the whole time and choosing my perspectives, because it is still, like you had mentioned, neutral. Like reality really doesn't have a meaning or definition to it. I'm still assigning that to it. But if I see it from the lens of it's all love, all beauty it's all glory it's all magnificent it's all spectacular and glorious glorified there's so many other words you can add on to like and you see it from that and then you it's like you just build up that that it's life is so awesome it's so beautiful now and these books have helped me recondition my mental body mostly especially the mental body needs the reconditioning, meaning the mind. Um, but these books, Book of Love, Book of Life, Book of Heaven, and the Book of Life, they all help people so much in that reconditioning process to align with your divinity. And really, it's aligning within. It's going within. Living more from your soul, from your heart, from your divinity, from God within, from the Christ within, uh, from your original blueprint, there's all these terminology mm -hmm. from your divine self, your holy self, your blessed self, um, the original blueprint or original plan for your life, living from that perfection and that peace and that joy and that love, living from that inside and then staying in that state of being and have that recondition and have your humanness align with that. So as the book say, your human self and your like divine self or your God, you could say divine self, God self, like your human self and your divine self become one self. You know, you're connecting to God within you. So it's like your humanness and your permanent connection to God become one and you maintain that. It takes practice to maintain these things. It's like if you learn to throw the ball right-handed and someone's like, hey, you know, 
for what we're doing, left-handed works better. And you're like, ah, oh, I have to learn how to mm -hmm. do something differently. But it's really, to me, it's like, if, if a parent put their shoes on their kids growing up and put the wrong shoe on the wrong foot, mm. and the kid's just walking around through school, like walking kind of clumsy and kind of weird and can't run as fast. And it's like, because your environment taught you to use the tool, taught you wrong. But let's just put the feet on. She was on the right foot. And then you start doing that. And you're like, oh, okay. Works better. You might have to remind yourself to put them on the right feet for a while. Well, and there's, yeah, there's yeah. different ways to learn something new. I mean, like yeah. you, when you think of the left, the throwing the ball with the left hand, like, okay, well, let's, well, I need you to learn now because it's the World Series. Or you could do something simple. Like you jump into the World Series and see what happens. You know, it's going to be an experience for sure. Mm -hmm. Or you can brush your teeth each day with your left hand and mm -hmm. build it over time too. And that's probably, you know, somewhere in the middle is probably a good spot. Although jumping in the deep end can cause trauma uh, and maybe take longer to learn or learn faster. It depends on the the person. I, by the way, I could literally do this for like 12 hours straight, I think. So how are you on, on time? I know it's a super beautiful day and uh, uh, I want to probably wrap it up, check in with I'm, you. Okay. I'm, I'm getting close <laughs> to my, my meal time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well then, uh, is there anything else that you just wanted that, that you feel compelled to, I do I'm, I'm one more check about one more question for you. Okay. What do you believe happens after the human part of our experience is done? After the human part? I've even thought about that the last few days, <laughs> something that I noticed, uh, something about the afterlife, that concept. And I'm like, where did I see it? Maybe I saw some post or some, something about the afterlife a few times. And I was like, maybe the afterlife is right now. It's when, when we shift ourselves from our human limitations to our eternal glory and beauty and magnificence and live more from it's stated in these books in some ways like um, live and for some people they're already connected how should I I'm kind of weaving I'm like yeah I might as well just say, <laughs> say this in a way but live more from your angelic self mm. than from your humanness Live more from your greatness than your limitations. Live more from your unlimited magnificence and glory. Live more from the expansion. Like live more from a higher, like you, if you imagine yourself in your physical body, you think, oh, this is me. I'm in this physical body. It's like you're a body within your like soul and within your like consciousness. It's kind of like the earth. You have the earth. I just remember like third grade, you have a picture of the earth and then those electromagnetic waves around the earth, you know, the electromagnetic field, learning about North and South pole and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So if you have the earth and those electromagnetic waves around the earth, you think, oh, it's the earth with this field around it. Is it, or is it the field of energy and the earth is the mass inside of it? And that's actually how it works. So we are this mass of energy, our physical body, but our emotional body goes out mm. 10, 15, 20 feet around us. That's why someone can walk in a room in a bad mood 20 feet away and you're like, what just happened? They didn't touch you, but they did touch you. You feel, you feel it in their energy body. Mm. Their electromagnetic field around their body was going out ahead of them, like <laughs> zapping people <laughs> Maybe zapping people all day long. But, um, and then when you meet someone good, you might not even be touching them, but your energies are interacting. And it's like, oh, there's this like coherence between the two of you. It's like, oh, it just feels good around this person. It's all good. So, uh, living more from, yeah, your, your greatness and your beauty than what you have been programmed to think about yourself or the world and things like that, living more from and, and picking ways to look at the world in a better way than what you see. Because when I'll just say, when any of us experiences something in life and then imagine something way better and keeps imagining it better, 
and here's about, here's about it, anything. Oh, there's this thing happening in the world. There's some place, location. And maybe you don't even need to have any of those things happen. But sometimes when we experience like the contrast of life, it like, oh, I experienced something I don't want. And it shoots off a like, I know I want it to be this better way. Hmm. So that's kind of what happened to me last year, the, that oppressive energy. Because I was running up and down the beach. Um, like you said, there's a caution tapes by the ocean and the police and stuff. I was running on the pavement, not on the beach. And then several days into it, like the police were like, hey, man, we can't have you run here. And I was like, well, the yellow thing's there. The beach is there. I'm just, you know, I'm fine. And they're like, yeah, well, we see you here every day and we don't want other people running here. I'm like, and I remember, I, so I stepped off the curve. I said, so if I stepped here, would this be okay? And the guy's like, uh, no, that would be an infraction code eight, blah, 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 like blocking traffic. And I was <laughs> like, you're just, you're just looking to mess with people. You're not like, you know, and, but something in that pushed me down and blasted me into I'm experiencing peace, love, joy, happiness, freedom. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, and that's it. And I want to give credit to to some of the law enforcement too, because you're talking about, you know, energetic bodies. And I remember running by the park mm-hmm. and seeing the police lined up with the caution tape. And there were, I got two very distinct feelings from body language and facial expressions. Very different. There were... People like like that, that I, I felt like some law enforcement was like, this is my opportunity to crush this person's soul. Yeah. And then I saw people smiling at me and they were like, you go. Like, almost, I almost felt like they were encouraging me to yeah. run faster and it's getting like fuel from that. Yeah. Okay. Like everything that we get to choose. Yeah. Which are we going to feel crushed by the person that's like, why are you running outside? How dare you? Or the good for you yeah. person. I'm going to choose that good for you. Yeah. You know, every time. And I, I didn't, looking back, it's like, I still did react. <laughs> yeah. I reacted to the situation, which I could have observed it more and stayed present, that sort of thing, and just let it kind of float past me. But something about it did go, oomph, all right, screw this, I'm out of here, and I need to go somewhere mm-hmm. where there's freedom and some better vibe. And it's like Sedona. So I went there, and it was like, the collective energy there was like, yeah, we're not, you know, into this, like a lot of things that they're implementing. We're just like, we're just going to live our life, you know? So somehow it fired me into kind of launched me into the, into heaven on earth, like fully, you know? So that's been the biggest lesson. This last year has been the best, it's been the best year of my life really to write these books and, have my body be healthier and uh, seeing the world the way that I see it. It's amazing. It's like a week or a month or a year from now. Who knows? <laughs> it's going to be good though. Good for you. It's going to be glorious and like glorious and glorified beyond anything I could probably come up. With. Probably whatever I'm imagining in my mind. It's like, ah, God's like, dude, you're going to get way more. Just stay, <laughs> stay, stay with the good thoughts and, Stay with like the connection to him and, you know, embody the messages in the book. The books, are, they're just really powerful. Living them. Oh, they're so good. And I say that because it's a message that came through me. It's not like I'm bragging. I read the books every day. I, I read them before I came over here. If my mind ever goes, I'll go exercise on the beach and usually I'll end my exercise and I'll, on my phone, on Kindle, you know, like I just have the electronic version of the books and I'll just pick a page, start reading a chapter and I'll read it out loud while I'm looking over the beach on this, at that little point or in Wind and Sea, mm-hmm. the north side. Beautiful beach. Yeah. So, and I'll just talk for 10 or 15 minutes, get my like speaking and declaring beautiful things over myself and the world and just do that and keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that and then get guided on the way. You know, now the next book's coming. Who knows? Maybe I'll just, maybe these books keep coming. I I didn't know I would write any books, but this will be four after this one. So 
Well, this is probably a good time to to give yourself a, a plug in terms of, I mean, whatever you want, whether it's some acting work or, I mean, obviously your books, Instagram, please uh, plug away. Yeah. So all the books, the book of love, the book of light, the book of heaven and the book of life, uh, those are on Amazon. So you can get the paperback or the ebook and the ebook just connects to Kindle. So you don't need the Kindle device. You just download the app on your phone because some people aren't real sure how that works. Um, but that's really easy. I actually made, when will this come out in a few days? Good question. Depends on how much I may have to do. Okay. <laughs> Try to get it out for the end of the weekend. Okay. Well <laughs> then I, for some reason I felt like dropping the ebook Kindle price to mm -hmm. almost the floor. I made up each of the books a dollar and 11 cents. Okay. Cause I'm like, it's an electronic version of it. Let's get it out to as many people, change as many lives as possible. Um, and if they want the paperback, they can buy those and get them through Amazon. That's easy. Um, but yeah, you'll love the books. And I'd love for you to read the books, leave reviews of the books on Amazon. And also, you can hit me up on, just send me a DM on uh, Instagram or something. Just look up, I love Brother Dan. That's my page. <laughs> I love Brother Dan. And uh, yeah, I, I like getting some sort of feedback because... You know, I, I get it a lot from people, but, and I've wondered, it's like, uh, when I read a good book, I've never once thought of, like, I, like Joe Dispenza writes good books that are uh, becoming supernatural. I've read that one. That was great. But I never thought, you know, I should send him a message, tell him thank you that I love the book. Mm. So people might not think in general to like hit up the author and say, yeah, this book had a positive effect on my life. And I because I've never thought that I just read the book. And then, so the authors might be kind of people out there wondering, like, I think I'm having a good, uh, I think I'm giving a good message to the world, changing lives, but I'm not hearing back from people. <laughs> <laughs> but so feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Uh, cause I, I do like that. It, it, and it, I want to build a community this, the collective. Okay. So, and we could end, end with this. There's something called the Maharishi effect. Do you know what that is? Mm -mm. So there's a the Maharishi effect, which, and Greg Braden and some other like spiritual, also scientific guys, I learned about this like 10 years ago when I was living in my parents' basement. Um, but it's basically, they would have groups of people meditate and study the effects of that group meditating on the collective. Mm. So like, in Israel during war times in the, I think it was the 70s. I may be messing up the dates here, guys, but you'll get the point. <laughs> like in Israel during war times in the 70s, they'd have a group of 158 people meditating for mm -hmm. peace, energetically holding that vibe. And they could measure war-related activities drop in the whole region Insane. while that happens. And they've done other things like stock market goes up, crime in areas goes down in New York City, stuff like that. So this is a concept that's been around for a while. And when I learned about the Maharishi effect, they said it's the square root of 1% of a population. So if you had a population, so my ma I studied engineering. I was a mechanical engineer before this acting thing happened. <laughs> just so more, there's more to me than just like, oh, just be a movie star. It's like, no, I studied, I worked in the aerospace program. So I like these equations and stuff like that. But um, so if you, I looked at this as a square root of 1% of the population. So energetically, a small group of people can transform a whole collective of people. So... If you do the math, it's like, okay, if there was a school of 2,500 people, like a, a school, 2,500 students, square root of 1% of that population would be, it would take five people to resonate in a certain way to transform that whole group. So this is over time I piece this together. I'm like, okay, how did America happen? So America happens, what, 52 or 56 or 58 people signed the Declaration of Independence because they're feeling oppressed for whatever reasons. And they energetically create some sort of energetic bubble, a belief system, an action process, and they transform the whole and create a country because they want to let go of this oppressive thing that they're experiencing from the manipulators in their time. 
we still have our manipulators going on in the world today energetically so i was like okay that happened in in america to create this country civil rights movement in the 60s okay so you have a certain group of people who are like okay we've had it with this oppression and we are energetically we are worthy we are good enough we we believe we should have equality and then it goes from person 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 so you have a small group of people transforms the collective experience change policies change laws all this stuff so how many people does it take to create heaven on earth for the collective if there's eight i just figured about eight billion people in the world i was like okay what would be the math how many people if they really resonated with love peace joy heaven god's love and light and beauty and glory those concepts really are anchored into that in in all in their being and their knowing and their reality Eight billion people, it would take 8,945 people to resonate in a certain way and hold that vibration and transform the collective on earth into heaven on earth. So it's like creating a tipping point. Yeah, are you getting them? Oh, um, yeah, <clears throat> creating, a, creating a tipping point energetically, just like there's tipping points in marketing and fashion and Malcolm Gladwell's tipping point book, like yeah, those sort of things. Everything. So it, it takes these like early adopters, like some people get it early. Which is less than 3% of the population in mm-hmm. North America. Yeah. So you, you have <laughs> these, and there's people who believe in these concepts and they live them. They're like, I believe in unconditional love. Mm-hmm. And I practice it every day. I met this dude on a hike in Sedona. I show up to a hike in Boynton Canyon with a girl that ended up being my girlfriend for a few months. She's awesome. We start hiking and the dude walks up and gives us a, a heart, um, uh, or a rock that he chiseled into heart shapes. He's like, this is for you, this is for you. And that, and he starts talking about, it's all about unconditional love. And just starts talking for like 30 seconds. I was like, hold on, buddy. I know I don't, I got to film this. So can you start over? <laughs> <laughs> so I put that on my YouTube channel too. Okay. Um, his name is, I think it was Robert or Richard. And he's just four minute speech about unconditional love. Love is all there is. All the stuff that people have been taught is a bunch of hooey. He's like, it's all about the love. And he just had such beautiful things to say. It's like, there's so many people who are living this. It really takes not polluting ourselves anymore. And even, I'll leave with this. Make a list. What, what do I do that pollutes my consciousness? What do I need to stop doing to live my best life? Make a list of those answers for yourself and make yourself stop doing those things. So like news, watching weird, like I, I had my list, mm-hmm. um, eating sugar, you know, I had, and I should do that exercise again because I still need to refine myself to go more. Um, but there's, there's people all over the world who are already like filled with love, filled with joy, know that's their natural state of being, know that's who they are, know that's who they've always been, even though they, they might have not always acted that way or were trained to be other than that. And they're living that. And then the more one person lights the flame, that it's like they're activated and they help the next person, the next person. And then we end up in a world where it's just beautiful. And the old world is just gone. <laughs> well, you are... You're lighting the flame. I'm going to blow your mind. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's this thing called the pandemic. You might have heard of it. Mm-hmm. It's out there. It exists. It's a thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is it the positive energy pandemic? Here's how I... I that one's... <laughs> I like that when You're lighting the flame in that. Here's how I, I participated based on your theory. Your... I mean, if we can call it a reality. I'm, I'm totally in, in line with it. I don't know enough about it to go like, oh, I'm all in. Like, I believe it. Yeah. I believe it in in my own way, my own personal experience. And here's one of the reasons, because I know I'm not the only person that had these thoughts leading into March of 2020. Mm-hmm. Three things that used to drive me nuts. Earlier, you mentioned like moments where you wouldn't share something and it was kind of this poison, right? Mm-hmm. Like, So this sounds super silly based on all the brilliant things we're talking about. So going to the men's restroom, guys not washing their hands. Drove me insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm almost compelled to like maybe I'm just gonna tell people like, dude, wash your hands. If I do, if I see that yeah. people people are washing their hands now though, mm-hmm. coming out of the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, second thing, 
we live in San Diego. Um, crowded side, like bad sidewalk etiquette. I get so these these are thoughts that played in my mind so many times. Like, God, another guy not washing his hands. Like, I might shake that guy's hand at a business meeting later. Mm-hmm. This dude's not washing his hands coming out of the bathroom. Like, it's disgusting to me. Um, sidewalk etiquette. Groups of like two, three, four, five people. You know, not being courteous on the sidewalk. Like, you pick your side. We'll pick our side. I'll pick whatever one. If it's just me or if it's being group, I'll take my side. Like, be courteous. Don't force people into the street. You know what happened after the pandemic? People were crossing the street, not even wanting to be on the same side as yeah. as me or a person, right? Like, oh, gosh. So, that came true. Uh, third one, just... In general, I remember running one day by the beach going and like car swerving people, just people being not aware in general of how to like interact in groups and like give the right away, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, be so how beautiful would it be to run by La Jolla Cove one day and have there not be any other people? So all three of those things came very true in the last year. You did it. (laughs) <laughs> you're the you did it well <laughs> <laughs> you're the guy it's <laughs> well somehow love and light is coming out of all of it so it's fine but <laughs> well it's it's fascinating because yeah. i um you know could vocalize to people like dude you're, you're not gonna wash your hands leave in the bathroom i could start saying that I'd probably do it in a little bit nicer way but how many other people you're talking about this uh how do you say mira uh, oh, Maharishi. Maharishi. Yeah, yeah. Google the term. Familiar. Google the term Maharishi. Uh, in fact, it's like a, a. So, what percentage yeah. of people though had those same thoughts as me, right? And if if the Maharishi effect impact is is that true energetic bind, like obviously a certain person, there was something happening in the world that a certain percentage of people latched on to. Maybe it's not just people washing their hands in the bathroom, but whatever variety of thoughts that contributed to an event. Yeah. And it just was this perfect global storm. Yeah, to get <laughs> to get sus- like a society, maybe they're neat. And I wrote I did write out a declaration of heaven on earth. Mm-hmm. This is before I wrote the books. These were not positive thoughts that I had, by the way. I'm not saying heaven I, on earth was like to have good well, sidewalk well, etiquette. Well, just <laughs> the way to have a group of people actually like really think similar stuff, mm-hmm. you know, like to have and believe and like practice loving, being loving beings. Um, yeah, to to somehow organize that type of uh, like our group thinks these these ways and has these types of perceptions and is creating this beautiful, glorious, magnificent world. Um, How to get a group of people to really think similar, amazing, wonderful ideas when plant seeds, keep planting the seeds. And I'm not sure how to measure it. Maybe just probably the biggest part is to do it inside of us, you know, to be, to create our our internal world <laughs> as wonderful as it possibly can be. Next generation too, man. That's yeah. like all about instilling it in kids. Like when you have someone that's a total jerk, there's a strong possibility that there is some parental influence in that. Not always. Yeah. But that's a, you know, happens. Yeah. I know. Yeah, there's so much stuff. <laughs> it, yeah, this whole world is like you have the earth and then the world is like, energy thoughts ideas uh like that bubble of energy around the earth is like very complex if mm-hmm. you think of everyone every human being's thoughts on earth kind of getting mixed into the whole thing and then you have animals and who knows this that's it's complex <laughs> there's a really good book for that too called the four agreements talks yeah. about the collective dream so yeah so you got I love Brother Dan on Instagram. Yeah, I love Brother Dan on Instagram. Facebook, look up Dan Proc, and then P-R- YouTube. P-R-O-K? P-R-O-K. And then YouTube, search Daniel Proc, and look for a page that says, like, 
helping you live a life filled with love, health, wealth, wisdom, and freedom, something like that. And you'll, you'll see all sorts of personal growth stuff on there, videos about like helping you to not let your mind get triggered or forgiveness or all these things leading up. Like I was going through a lot of that, like more of humanities or what I like getting a better belief system, those things. And then it led up to getting the downloads of the books. So the book of heaven and the book of life will be on the YouTube channel too. Yeah. So just connect with me and live a beautiful, glorious, magnificent, <laughs> wonderful life. Cause that's what's in the present moment all the time for us. Spread the love. Yeah. Spread it. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. Thank you. See, this is the real secret of life to be completely engaged with the here and now. Everybody wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself. <laughs> it was all a dream. Today is about the power of you. You've now entered the Human Derek Podcast.